from the rolling hills of England, to the sand-swept pyramids of Egypt, to the rivers of Italy, to a muck of a Florida prison. The Joestar bloodline has spanned time and space in manga and anime for over 30 years. Now it is up to Rose and Thorn, a new podcast, even Speedwagon is excited, to take his compatriots, Smarty. Can you name one rock band that isn't a part of this show? Hot Cocoa Rock. I'm just waiting for when they bring up Steely Dan. I like those guys. Nellie Bell. <sighs> and here I thought my family had issues. And LAF. This is a really roundabout way to get me to watch anime. Through this series of bizarre adventures on the Rotho Jojo Show Show. Hi there, and welcome to the Rotho Jojo Show Show. I am one of your hosts, Rosenthorn, and I've been watching Jojo's Bizarre Adventure since uh, the end of Part Four anime, so about five years now. It sounds uh, like a support group. Well, though, I, I wanted to talk about everyone's history with the franchise, because some people have seen some of it. And I, That's I, fair. I've been watching JoJo for a little under 24 hours. <laughs> <laughs> well, Coco, we'll start with you. Oh, do I just go into, like, do I yeah. just go? Yeah, well, what, what's your history with JoJo? Um, uh, everything up until very recently that I have learned about JoJo has been against my will. Um, the more I learned about it, the more I was like, okay, I feel like everyone's just, like, screwing with me, because no way does all this stuff happen. No way is there a character named Ario Speedwagon. Like, I, I have to, I have to, like, I have to know, or else it's never going to stop beating away at me. And so, Rose very kindly was like, hey, I got a podcast. And I'm like, okay. Now, if, if, if not now, it'll never happen. Now, so what for you're saying, good. So what you're saying is that this is Stockholm Syndrome at work. <laughs> now, for full transparency, you're committing this to his his interests now. For full transparency, Coco has a connection to the actual cast. This this is true. All right, I, elaborate, elaborate really quick. This is true. This. No, go um, on, go on. Okay, yeah. Uh, yes. Casey Modulo and Kara Buckland, who are both in Stone Ocean as Emporio and Jolene Joestar, are dear friends of mine. Oh, okay. Aww. So I'm very excited when we get to part six for. Uh, for, for that discussion. I also am from Florida, so that's another... Yeah, that's, part, <laughs> part 6 takes place in Florida, so... Uh, uh, Lee, what's your connection with JoJo? Uh, so, I watched the first two episodes of The Sub when I was a freshman in college, and the third episode I just watched the other day, so that is literally all I have seen of JoJo up until this point. Fair enough. Ariel, Ariel what about you? Well, um, I've seen a little bit of part six because of Rosen, and then I have two co-workers who have currently been just telling me random history things, and it's like, uh, I don't fully understand. And I've been pressured by Rosen for, what, going on two years now? Yeah, I think so. So yeah, that's probably been that's been my big thing to it. And Jay, all right, ripping the bandaid off. Okay, um, so for me, um, the most I've watched is I watched a decent amount of part one a while ago. I tried to start Stone Ocean recently, but how I got into it is, well, like I guess. We all share somewhat of a commonality here. Rosen and I do a show called Tag Team, and anime comes up a lot on that show. Needless to say, um, one of the shows that came up, I believe, my memory serves, was JoJo's Bizarre Adventure in in that of specific references. And also, it's starting to dawn on me that this might be a support group for how much this show is being inflicted upon us by Rosen. <laughs> yeah! Dang, Rosen! It's gonna turn into that. But we're here with a smile and we're gonna enjoy the show as it comes along. Good! Now, that's, that's the I, attitude I'm looking for. Now, before we get into it, I do want to make I want to make a note. Um, just because I want you to understand how how much I, I wanted to get into this. I, I sat last night and I said to my wife, I was like, Hey Marissa, I have to watch some episodes for a show of an anime. 
uh, do you want to sit along with me? And she was like, oh, fuck yeah, let's do that. So I started to get her into it, and one episode in, she's like, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? It's not for everyone. So there I am, sitting alone at midnight, watching three episodes of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. The dub, mind mind you. the Not the sub. The, the overdub, which I need to... Let's clarify this really quick. Who's sub, who's dub on, on in this panel? I watched uh, dub. Okay. I watched, I watched sub. dub. I watched sub because I'm a filthy fucking weeb. Okay. I, so, I've i seen the sub like three times, so I went okay. with the dub this time. All right, that's fair. I want to... I, I just want to say something, and this is probably an unpopular opinion. Abysmal. The fucking dub is abysmal, and I'm gonna just watch the sub from now on. Let me guess why. The accents. What? Oh my god. I, I here's here's the thing. Oh my god. The only they thing stopped the accents me, after part two. The only thing what? that is, re- excuse, just really, the yeah. only thing that is, that is, that has a redeeming quality in the voice is none other than that twink Dio Brando. Everything else is awful. Well, here's the thing. Uh, on Randomme, my main anime show, I generally provide voice actor info, like just w- other roles that they've done, and I have a bunch. I think I know who Dio Brando is. Do you want to take a guess now? It's, what's his name from Dragon Ball? Uh, God, what's his name? God, just told me the other day, so I'll... Am I am I am I mixing two actors up? No, it, it is it is a Danganronpa actor. I feel like it's Danganronpa two. It's the big muscly dude. Yep, that's Patrick Sides and Nick Amaro. Yep. Okay. Anyway, we'll get into his other roles in a little bit. And Becky adds, yes. Dio doesn't remain a twink for long. I well, he's no, he goes from twink to twunk. I know this. We'll we'll get we'll get there. But uh, I know I'm jumping ahead. Anyway, yeah. I do have a bit of uh, background info. Okay, go ahead. Uh, so. Bit of a bit of history, created by legendary mangaka and possible Highlander Hirohiko Araki. Um, elaborate, please. Go yes, elaborate on I, will, I will gladly. Hirohiko Araki uh, has looked the same for thirty fucking years. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> oh my god! Right? Man, must be a Can you pull that up on screen? Pe- people bring up people bring up the vampire idea all the time. <laughs> so he's the Keanu Reeves of anime. <laughs> yes, I think Ariel said that exact thing. I should mention, uh, Araki is a fan of many things, and he puts all that in his work. Uh, he's a fan, fan of Italy, uh, West, Western music, obviously, just sure. Western pop culture in general. Uh, he loves uh, Baroque paintings. Like, he, he, over his time, his style has developed to where he's a, a painter now for his manga. Ah. Like, around part seven, it stopped being weekly and started being monthly, both because the chapters were longer and because the art style had evolved that much to where it was... He was actually painting shit. Goddamn. Like, I've, I've seen... So he's actually had uh, his works in the Louvre. Oh my god. Wow. Whoa. Yeah. Good for him being in the Louvre. He's had uh, campaigns with Gucci. He's had... like all, all this crazy shit happen. And he's actually incorporated them into his work because he has an author insert character we'll get to in part four. Uh, the first chapter of Part 1, Phantom Blood, was released on January 1st, 1987. Mm. So just, that is uh, a way to start a year. Phantom Blood is the thing we're watching, correct? Yes, Phantom Blood is Part 1. Okay. Uh, some of Rocky's inspirations for the familial aspect of the of the series include Roots and East of Eden, which neither of which I've read. Huh. I was wondering what the, what the, uh, the literature background was going to be. That's something I wanted to hit on once yeah. we get more into the episode. Yeah, he's a very cultured man. Uh, as for the characters, um, how do I put this? Builds. Uh, that was inspired by the fact that Schwarzenegger and Stallone were very popular at the time. That, that makes track. a lot of sense. Right? That, that really does. Well, actually, yeah, the one you know thing what? I will say is about that is I want to I wanna question his, his design work on big body, tiny heads. Because... <laughs> That was fairly fucking noticeable. That was because he was just starting out as a manga because he had only known one thing before this. He took a cue from Rob Liefeld. <laughs> and unlike Rob Liefeld, he actually improved. Honestly, I was thinking, uh, like, BL manga. Big the way t- that it- <laughs> An Iraqi product being gay? I'm shocked. <laughs> uh, as for the posing, that was inspired by Iraqi, Iraqi taking a trip to, surprise, surprise, Italy. 
Now, there, this is not actually the first adaptation of Phantom Blood, technically. There was a Phantom Blood movie in production in 2007, but it was scrapped and is now lost media. Now, wait, is it like a live action movie? No, animated. Okay, because. Uh, no, I'll continue. I'm gonna look up something. There was a live-action JoJo anime, but it was part four, and that was Takashi Miike. That's what I was looking for. The Takashi Miike. It JoJo's covers about the first adventure. three episodes of part four. Which, if we ever get to that, we will. If we can ever get to that. I'm gonna. I'm gonna probably take the driver's seat because I fucking love Takashi Miike. Oh, the movie. Yeah, sure. Yeah, uh, and I, well, we watched. Side note: Me and Rosen watched. Uh, the Gekko Den Saiban. The uh, Phoenix Wright movie. It's really good. Yeah, I'm glad you liked it a lot. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's not exactly faithful, but it's a really good movie. It's great. Uh, Becky adds, a lot of classic JoJo poses are just, just directly inspired by poses in fashion magazines. Yeah. Uh, and again, this is all starting to help the anime make a lot more Yeah. Sense. Like, once you know what the guys like, it all clicks. Uh, but yeah, like I said, it's lost media. Uh, all we have currently is a trailer without sound. Maybe someday it'll surface. After all, Saban Moon did. For those who don't know, Saban Moon was the attempt by Saban, the Power Rangers people, to make an American Sailor Moon. We oh, covered I it. Remember that. We covered it on uh, this this year's Random April Fools episode. It is fucking awful. <laughs> it's so horrible. Oh. I actually watched it too. It is. It is definitely a product of its time. Insulting it, is the word I would use. Again, I'm trying to be nice about it. It's like if you mashed up Sailor Moon with the Burger King Kids Club. <laughs> oh my god. Feel, yeah, including having the in the wheelchair. The token time. wheelchair yeah. person, yes. Oh man. Yeah. Uh, the anime we're covering on this show started on October 6, 2012. Though the dub started in 2015. That's why it's listed about that on behind the voice actors. Gotcha. Due to Araki's unique, detailed art style, JoJo was thought for, to be unanimatable for the longest time. In comes David Production, Gods Among Mortals. Seriously, David Pro knock it out of the park with every part, as you'll see going forward. They've also one, done... Good. I have one bone to pick about the animation. Yeah. But I don't know if we're there yet, and tell me if we're not there yet, but I am severely disappointed in the fact that the intro to... to part one is so much better than the animated series itself i would rather okay have, like, that that's a thing just be a whole fucking series that's a thing like, with anime so they pour the budget into the open like they pour uh, extra budget into the opening it's so good. plus though. that was a different studio if you made that the whole thing i would have been like sign me up here's it's, it's, it's nice I mean, but i'm gonna push back on that a little bit because i like the I like the animation style that they're going for. Uh, we'll get more into it, but like, like, I like the for thickness, sure. the lines, the vibrancy of the colors. I think it really kind of- Yeah, that's all like emulating the manga. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to interject a little bit too Please. on that. Um, when it comes to like the openers always being better, I mean, even think about all the way through the 80s with American animation. Like, think of Thundercats, He-Man. Yes, exactly. Uh, yeah, I know. All of them, it is just the way to get you to sit down to actually watch the show. That's the big point of the intro, so that's why they pour more money into it. Yeah. So I can see why the JoJo animation sure. for the opener is better. Yeah. Uh, Becky, sure. Becky brings up a good point about the accents. Uh, with with this one, it takes place in England. The next one takes place ma majorly in Italy. Part three takes place in Asia. That's why they dropped the accents. Oh, <laughs> I figured that, so much. You, that tracks. Yeah. That's probably, okay, probably, yeah. probably a smart move, but yeah. Where I, was I'm enjoying the accents. I want to I oh, they're like fun, the but I get why people wouldn't like them. Not it's nice. It's really silly. Hard disagree on this uh, Not a fan. But before we do, Jay, I believe you had our first JoJo fun fact of the day. Oh, yes. I'm so excited to share this fact. Now, folks, I did some high researching, and I finally came to this fact, and I needed to share it with you all. Did you know that the reason for the name JoJo's Bizarre Adventure is because there is the syllable Joe and the syllable Joe in the first and the last name. Doesn't matter what it is. If you're a Jonathan, if you're a John Jacob Jingleheimer Joe star, if you're a Johan Sebastian Joe star, whatever you are, as long as you're a Jojo, that's in your name. Okay. You joke, but actually, do you know the reason for that? I'm joke joking. Yes. Yeah. Do you want to know the reason for why, why the Jojo thing? He wanted an alliterative name like Steven Spielberg. Excuse me? Yeah. Like I said, Iraqi loves Western culture. I mean, that's fair. 
I mean, we're gonna get into the name references in a bit. Yeah. Uh, but the actual JoJo fun fact of the day is one uh, bridging this show in Randomay because I had this loaded in the in the in the chamber since we uh, covered a certain show. I'm gonna bring up in a bit. <clears throat> uh, today's fun fact is uh, there's a famous interview with Araki conducted by a fan of his, a woman dressed as the main character of Part Three, Jojo Kujo. In it, this woman mentions how she wants him to uh, Jojo to marry her and spit on her. Good for her. The reason this is a fun fact is simple. That woman is Shoko Nakagawa, musician and the person who made Sora Ero Days, the Gurren Lagann OP, aka the greatest anime opening ever made, and my fucking entrance music. Okay, can I ask you a question? Is this <laughs> yes. the same theme that you came down the aisle to on your wedding? Not the aisle, that was Trigun, but we entered the reception to Sorry. a cover of it. <laughs> Sorry, I had to... Okay, can I tell a quick story really quick? Yes. Okay, so we pull up to this wedding. And by the way, it was a beautiful wedding. Thank I you. I want to make that note. It was a beautiful wedding. We had a great time. Um, the the preacher comes out, or the person who's... My uncle, the wedding. Yeah. Your uncle comes out and is like, all right, we're about to begin. And then all of a sudden, the Trigun theme hits, and we all go, what the fuck? <laughs> and I can tell you why that happened? I know, because I know it's you. <laughs> no, no, no. I thought I was walking out alone. I didn't realize my parents were coming with me. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I was denied critical need to know information. Because I... <laughs> so, like, with my wedding, it was just I walked out, and I was like, all right, I'm, I'm just doing this, whatever. I didn't know I had that option. You didn't? Oh, oh, shit. I didn't know I had the option to pick my theme music. Otherwise, I would have come down to the Hardy Boys theme. No <laughs> I could see Honestly, that. Honestly, no, so... that's... Oh. go ahead. Because you're the you're the other only other married person here. Yeah, I was gonna say. Honestly, my husband didn't do that either, and I wish now he had something like that. <laughs> so I um, so I'm sitting there. I watch you come down, and I'm like, "All right, that's his wedding. Let him fucking do it." And then. I forget who it was, but they were sitting at my table. They're sitting in front of me, and all I hear them go without missing a beat. That checks out. <laughs> I think that was Bunny. I, no, I, not Bunny. It was uh, it was another couple. Uh, oh, it might have been some of Casey's haunt friends. Right, but I was just like, <laughs> one of them was like, yeah, that checks out. I'm like, yes, it does. <laughs> Good <laughs> for him. <laughs> Kudos. I, 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 I did not know that she was going to come down to Dearly Beloved, the Kingdom Hearts thing. That was... That was beyond beautiful. So good. Tell you right now, that was so good. But like that, was, that also checks out. But that was perfect. Yes. But anyway. I think I think we have we have to get to. Uh, I, I'm not going to steal the Millennium Microphone way of doing this, but episode one, Dio the Invader. We open on a dark and stormy night. Snoopy must be writing another novel. I think I do that same joke when we covered this on Random Man. Uh, nice. This pleasant fellow is Dario Brando. Now, as I do on these podcasts, I'm going to list the English and Japanese voices for characters, uh, well, you know, truncated, because for time, uh, along with some of the roles they played, because it's what I do. In Japanese, Dario is played by Tadashi Miyazawa, who is known as Grandpa Moto in Yu-Gi-Oh!, as well as Zeno Zoldic in the 1999 adaptation of Hunter x Hunter. In English, it's Steve Kramer, who was the original voice of Shenron in Dragon Ball, uh, some guys in Bebop and Trigun, Terry Sanders Jr. in Mobile Suit Gundam 8 The Mess Team, Cyborg 006, the old Hokage in Naruto, the old Supreme Kai in Dragon Ball Super, and Shinsui in Bleach. Yeah, if, I, if I could get those Dragon Balls, I would really wish that Shenron wasn't a big asshole in this fucking show. Oh, uh, yeah. Dario Brando is the root of all evil not here. Not spoil anything, but he is... He is a dick. Now, Jay, do you know the reference with Dario Brando's name? Well, you know, Brando would be Marlon like Brando. Marlon Brando. Dario, I would assume, I would assume Argento. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. So I guess got I a did. film buff in here. Score one for me. Suspiria and other movies, I think. Yeah. All anything, anything Giallo, he did. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, it only occurs to me now that I neglected to mention that the show can get extremely violent. Oh yeah. Yeah. As can I'm I, looking can at, I make, can I make a quick spoiler, just really quick? Please. Okay. One of the first instances of violence that I have witnessed 
in this show is Dio Brando kicking the family dog. See, you're, you're so, missing the, the, the one that caused me to write that note. Oh, which God. is seeing the cab driver who was, or the carriage driver with a fucking oh, yes, piece of rebar for, through his face. That's right. I forgot about, yeah, that happened. Because I remember, I specifically remember Marissa seeing that and going, what the fuck is this? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, Dario's accent isn't Cockney, it's the entire cock. <laughs> So Dario, being his disgusting self, immediately goes to robbing the corpses of the carriage crash. Unfortunately, he doesn't check that there are corpses. And he like goes to he goes to rob them, and he's like, "You saved my life." So then Dario has to be like, "Uh, yeah." I meant to do that. I meant to. <laughs> oh, I totally meant to do that. So Absolutely will I get a reward was... for this? Or I... <laughs> do you have any money on you or food? Because it's 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 pretty it's pretty dire out here. No dire's later. Oh god. Uh, yeah, the lone adult survivor oh. is George Joestar, played in English by uh, Mark Dryson, who was Guts in Berserk, Kaiba Akihiko in Sword Art Online, Kalen Kessler in Yu-Gi-Oh! Five Ds, and Zoro in the Four Kids One Piece. Ouch. <laughs> in Japanese, he's played by Masashi Sugu uh, Sugawara, who is Ray Lo Lovelock in Macross Seven, E Honda in Street Fighter. Ingway and Trigun, South Burning in Gundam, Chocobo Sam in Final Fantasy VII Remake, and hilariously to me, Mania the Cameraman in Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs. Oh, okay. By the Solid way, choice. Dario's wife not appearing outside this scene. Miss not appearing. <laughs> Miss not appearing in this film, yes. <laughs> uh, I should mention, uh, I, I've done, I started an abridged JoJo a while back, and the editing is not great because the editor didn't know how abridged series work by his own admission. So it's not ideal, but I'm still super proud of the script and the acting. I bring this up because one of the highlights was Aaron Mills as George Joestar. Uh, just one of the biggest, uh, played as one of the biggest idiots I can imagine. Like, I love the line he had, uh, Am I dead? Is this heaven? Did I win? Yeah. <laughs> that's very good. Oh, hey, that's a neat mask. I wonder what it's for. Yeah, that's exactly what I thought. Ancient artifact in a protective thief case? Yeah, now, here's the, here's the thing. I knew what it was, and then I thought, why the fuck did he have that? No, here's the thing. That belonged oh, to JoJo's mom. Why did why she did have that? Know? Why did she need it? Yeah, like, was she, part of, was she a part of some, like, and spoiler alert here, was she a part of some, like, vampire cult? And it was passed down to her, and she's like, "You're gonna make your grandson." Oh, See, what oh, I was thinking. Shit. What I was thinking is some weird eyes wide shut thing. I was oh, thinking goosebumps myself. Oh, the dichotomy are... of eyes are... wide shut and goosebumps. Are... I was thinking actually, it's always sunny in Philadelphia, where one of them was gonna put it out and go, "What's the password?" Orgy. <laughs> uh, Becky says, answer. Victorian Brits really love mishandling ancient artifacts. True! Yeah, because uh, literally Becky and I, we actually talked about this. There were there were people that would eat mummies. Like, there was mummy jerky that was sold back I in the day. I feel like I remember that coming up in conversations somewhere. Not with you, but I feel like I remember that being a thing I've heard before. Yeah. And then they also had made a color of brown called Mummy Brown, where they used ground up mummy uh, dust and created paint. This what is happened making... to Grandma? She really tied the room together. <laughs> this is uh, making that scene in like the, the beginning of future, the uh, like second or third episode of Futurama. This is an outrage! I was going to eat that mummy. This sarcophagus <laughs> contained the remains of Emperor Nibala. Hey, Professor! Great like jerky! jerky. <laughs> uh, so because George Joestar is an idiot, he owes Dario Brando a life debt. Shock didn't- Dario didn't just ask for free room and board, but here we are. Uh, new stone mask with blood extraction action! And with that dope transition, it's 12 years later. We meet the baby, now having grown it into our protagonist, Jonathan Joestar. He's played in Japanese by Kazuyuki Okitsu, who was Vincent Phantom Hive and Black Butler. Had to mention that for Ariel. Yes. Sevibara in uh, Grand Blue, Suguru Daisho in Kaikyu, Mac Marco in Star vs. the Forces of Evil, Fat Gum in My Hero Academia, and Spider-Man in the Sony Spider-Man games. Oh. oh. In English, huh. it's Johnny Young Bosch, whose illustrious career has included, but is not at all limited to, because he's had like 500 fucking roles, 
Kaneda in the redub of Akira, Vash the Stampede from Trigun, Artemis in the Vizdub of Sailor Moon, Toji in Evangelion, Sabo in One Piece, Ichigo in Bleach, Nero in Devil May Cry, Lelouch in Code Geass, Yu Narukami in Teru Odachi in Persona 4, the titular Kamen Rider Dragon Knight, Bumblebee in the underrated Transformers War for Cybertron, Zero in Mega Man, Furion in Dissidia, Itsuki Kozumi in Haruhi Suzumiya, Yang in Street Fighter, Yuzaku in Toradora, Hajime Hinata in Danganronpa 2, Rantaro Amami in Danganronpa V3, Shijiro in Kill a Kill, Doyle in Baki, Leo Futia. He get it, he's good! <laughs> in Promare, Rostu and Gurren Logon, Gyu Tomiyaka and Demon Slayer, fucking Broly, Vash again! There's a ton I had to leave out! And a partridge wow. in a pear tree. Yo, you said, you said, uh, Kaneda in, in the, in the Akira dub, like, and I was like, oh, I wonder if that's the one I listened to. And I remembered that, like, I watched the original Akira dub. Oh dear, oh, that one's so bad! It was so yeah. funny. Thank you for clarifying, by the way, because I, I always, and this, you're gonna question mm -hmm. how the fuck I do this, but I, for some reason, managed to, um, conflate his career with that of Keith Ferguson. I don't know who Keith Ferguson is. He is, uh, he is, <laughs> and this is the reason why, he's Bosch von Ronsenberg of Dalmasca <laughs> from mm. Final Fantasy. Oh, ah, I see. No. Oh, no. So I don't know why now I keep thinking of Johnny Young Bosch von Ronsenberg. <laughs> That's okay, I see it, yeah. Anyway, so carry on. You, you meant like Craig Ferguson? Like the, <laughs> the, 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 the former host of like oh I'm just like, imagining. No, no. I'm like, so what? good. I'm just imagining Jeff, Jeff Peterson the skeleton dressed as Vash the Stampede. Oh, I mean, you, you are forgetting a very influential role though for Johnny Young Bosch that got him started on his career. Adam though. and Power Rangers, I know. I've, I've tried Ed. to. I tried to stick to voice acting because, again, he has like 350 roles, all of which are super important. We get it. It's morphin time. Let's move on. And <laughs> Becky adds, na 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 na. It's the motherfucking JYB. I think she was going for uh for Snoop Dogg, but I went as Katamari. <laughs> That's funny. So yeah, like I said, the Steven Spielberg thing. And this is Danny the Dalmatian. Oh, what a good boy. Yeah, my first reaction was, "Aw, he's so cute. He's gonna die, isn't he?" Okay, so I rewatched the John Wick movies recently. I did not get attached. Araki is a is a dog person. However, oh, excuse me. Apparently, he's a Great Dane. But yeah, Araki's a dog person, but he knows that to make an effective villain, you have to have them do evil shit. So killing dogs is his go-to for evil shit. Yeah, there's nothing more evil than that. And that's something that I'm going to bring up again and again throughout these episodes, is how the fuck can JoJo keep on letting Dio slide after murdering his fucking dog? Yeah. Well, for, for this set of episodes, I can argue it's uh, Stockholm Syndrome and or uh, trauma blocking. But yeah. Uh, meanwhile, back at Nick Nolte's estate... Oh, wait, this is Dario Brando's house. He's a sick old drunk now, and we meet his son, Dio Brando. And yeah. again, I am surprised that he, that drunk old bastard got a, a hot ass kid, even though he's an absolute bastard. Oh God! <laughs> There's a term Ariel in anime called the ugly bastard. Okay. It's a term <laughs> in a certain genre of anime. Let's put it that way. Oh. Oh, oh. <laughs> it is called <laughs> hentai. And that, <laughs> and that that image is burned into my brain and I hate it and I need to wash it out with, well, I don't drink, so probably just <laughs> sleep. <laughs> Dario's jeans may have skipped a generation? Okay. Uh, but yeah. <clears throat> so Dio Brando. Uh, the most evil twink you would ever imagine next to what's his name from Berserk. Griffith. Griffith from Berserk. D uh, who would you like first, English or Japanese? Because I have a lot for both. Um, either or, go for it. I'll go with English then. Dio's played in English by Patrick Seitz, as we mentioned, who, yes, is Nekomaru Nidai in Danganronpa 2, Mono Kid in Danganronpa V3, Musashi Gota in Mob Psycho, uh, Frankie in One Piece, Kenpachi in Bleach, Rag of the Blood Edge in Blade is Blue, Sloth in Full Metal Alchemist, si Simon Brezhnev in Dorara, Jin Kazama and Bob and Tekken, Cervantes and Soul Calibur, Hugo and Street Fighter, uh, Gamaguri and Kill la Kill, Agni and Black Butler, Endeavor and My Hero, uh, Devastator and Transformers, Jiren and Dragon Ball Super, Hector and Fire Emblem, Thorkel and Vinland Saga, Brad Coleman and Lash Mashal, and I had to truncate a lot. That makes sense. About as much as I had to for the Japanese voice of Dio, Takahito Koyasu. Again, to name a few. 
Snufkin in Moomin Valley, Z uh, Zex Marquise in Gundam Wing, Butch in Pokemon, Navari in Fire Emblem, Toga in Utena, Optimus Primal in Transformers, the main character of Initial D, Kuzan in One Piece, Shingo in King of Fighters, Pandora in Yu-Gi-Oh, Taku Takamasayo in Yu-Gi-Oh GX, Luke Valentine in Helsing, and now we've only hit the 2000s. Bo 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 bo. Kenshiro and Newfist the North Star, Cypher in Kingdom Hearts 2 and, and Dissidia, Excalibur and Soul Eater, Scar's Brother and FMA, Zato 1 and Guilty Gear, Deadpool, like 10 Fire Emblem characters, I had to leave out so many roles, holy shit! I heard Dude. Kingdom Hearts and I was like, yay! Yeah, he was he was a uh, Cypher. My eyes. Uh, uh, he's like, the one who totally, totally owned you, Lamers. Yes, he was the Lamers guy. Uh. Becky says, I'm genuinely wondering if we need to start talking Hito Kuyasu drinking game. The man's fucking everywhere. Yeah, uh, if you've ever seen that meme from, uh, I think it's from Assassination Classroom, of uh, the guy uh, making ramen with a gun, that's Takahito Koyasu. Lee, I believe you had a, a question at this point. Did I? Yeah, I, I, in your notes you put uh, about the food thing. Oh, yeah. So, that, that is actually a good question. Um... Why is it such a common trope for anime protagonists to eat, like, vacuum cleaners? I actually was curious, because I didn't look this up. Uh, I found a theory. The theory is basically a combination of comedic exaggeration and wanting to emulate Goku. Yeah, wanting see, to emulate Goku? Th that's ah. what I was thinking of, like, when, when, this, when this started as the cliché. Yeah. Like, I, wonder, I wonder where that came from, like, how they decided... Decided for Goku if it's just the comedic exaggeration or if there was something else involved. I think it, for Goku was probably to justify his uh, insane training regimen. Makes sense too. Yeah. It's uh, why it's actually that's a good point. Uh, kind of to sidetrack into another thing we both love, uh, wrestling. Yeah. Kota Ibushi was once known as saying like, "I eat like junk because I work out harder." Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, anyway, continue. So we see Jonathan being raised to be a proper gentleman, and Dio being treated like shit by everyone. Also, uh, Dio Brando would absolutely be the type of idiot to listen to Joe Rogan's medical nonsense. Because at one point he's like, This medicine is snake oil, get me more booze! And we have a rarity for the series. <laughs> God. We have a rarity for the series, a hetero love interest. I know, right? Oh, thank God, that's a rarity. <laughs> oh yeah, this show is gay as wild. Okay, it's actually, no, I, I got, I got I worried, especially hyper masculine like, of anything. But like, because yeah. if I'm honest, like I wasn't, I wasn't huge on how like the love interest was depicted as basically just like a plot device instead of a character. Uh, Araki has admitted he, uh, he's not super fond of how part one was. Mar mostly because he cribbed too much from Fist of the North Star, but you know. It's does, it's the one does, that shows its does, age the most. Does she ever come back? Yes, she's in part two. Yes. Okay, good. Okay. At, at, le at least it's not just a throwaway character. No, and th th there aren't many female characters until part six, but they get but they're pretty they're all really good. That's good. Yeah. I, I was about to say like I hope she's a character this time. <laughs> yeah, no, she she doesn't have much much screen presence, but her screen presence is awesome. She's like a badass granny, but I'm getting ahead of myself. This is Erin Pendleton, currently being uh, harassed by dickhead bullies. She's played by Michelle Ruff, best known as Yoko Littner from Gurren Lagann. She's also Kaori and Akira, Luna and Sailor Moon, Ruki and Bleach, Young Satoru and Erased, Chi and Chobits, Fujiko Mine and Lupin III, uh, Sakura and Street Fighter, Yuki and Haruhi Suzumiya, Lina and Trigon, and again, a ton I had to leave off for time. This show has a lot of really pro prolific VAs in Part 1. For it's, a, it's, pretty, it's pretty stacked for, like, Part 1. Yeah. For example... In Japanese, it's Ayoko Kawasumi, who's Osaka and Azumanga Daio, uh, Ellen, Elena and Claymore, Machiko and Death Parade, Ellie and Rave Master, Saber and Fate, Genomaru and Gintama, Mogi and Initial Wait a minute. Yep. Wait a fucking minute. What's up? She, played, she plays people like, who are named like Ellie, Elena, Elena. Erin. Elena. That, that is weird. Holy shit. I this guess. is like this is like the uh, the equivalent of like I'm gonna just use a, a movie and again, yeah. I guess I'm the movie buff here. Um, this is the equivalent of like the scene in Goodfellas where they're at the wedding, yeah. and he's, he's like, "This is Paulie, this is Peter, this is Tony, this is yeah, he's like just Peter's, Paulie's everywhere." Uh, well, here's one you might know, Jay. Go on. Uh, the only one I have like left for notable roles for her is Fu in Shamarai Champlu. So it's. So it's literally oh, okay. just like, um, 
Oh shoot, uh, My Big Fat Greek Wedding when it's all the same name basically except for Gus. <sighs> Oh my Wildly different uh, movie comparisons here. What uh, sucks is that I, I don't have I don't have anything new to pitch to that because I also just like just rewatched Goodfellas. So that's also <laughs> I don't banger gotta... movie, banger. I'm Larry. This is my brother Daryl. This is my other brother Daryl. <laughs> uh, life was tough for perverts before the internet. Are are they seriously that desperate for some action? They're like twelve. <laughs> They're 12? Okay, but th th they're, they're teenagers, is my point. They're, 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 hold up. They're air quotes teenagers. Yeah, yeah. look. Have they're, ever, they're, did, they're teenagers in the same way that, like, Disney Channel stars are teenagers. Yeah, exactly. Did you ever see uh, the Invader Zim movie, Enter the Florpus? I have no. not. Really. The, I did. The opening scene from that is so, so useful for anime because it opens with, uh, like, Dib drawn as, like, as a JoJo character. Like super buff and everything, he goes, My name is Dip Membrane. I'm twelve years old when <laughs> he looks thirty. <laughs> I think about that every time I watch early JoJo. <laughs> uh not like it, it, it like they looked like fifteen the youngest. Yeah. And then there was a seven year time skip and <laughs> then they looked like eighteen. But it's, they're supposed <laughs> to be around Aaron's age, is the point. Uh but yeah. Uh, seems that Jonathan went to the Go Gonta Gokuhara School of Gentlemendom. Shame it, he didn't finish the course, uh, or he'd know how not to be weirdly sexist, but he's 12, what are you gonna do? And it's 18, See, it's, just, it's the 1880s. <laughs> this is where I wanted to bring up the, the literature base, because in, in, in this moment where you can see uh, him jumping in, I don't know her, but I have a reason to fight you, you can really see that influence of Tom Jones, Candide, and other, like, buildings, Roman and Picaresque literature. I, I know these are, these are phrases that might go over a lot of people's heads, but it's the idea of, like, a, a story about uh, character development and starring a roguish hero who gets by on his own guile. And so we're really starting to see that uh, influence taking place right, uh, at least right now. Makes a lot of sense, yeah. Uh, I wrote down the dub line, Crawl back to your, your damn manor, little Lord Fauntleroy! <laughs> it's such a stupid line, I love it. <laughs> So Dio's motivation ultimately boils down to fuck you, dad. Yeah, he really like it's it's fuck you, dad. I'm gonna I'll what is it? It's fuck you, dad. I'm going to. I'm, I'm gonna get gonna rich by stepping on everyone. I'm gonna, I'm gonna honor your wishes and I'm gonna get the riches that I deserve. But also, oh. fuck you, Joe. <laughs> Joe. But, but yeah. also, I I hate my dad and I I never want to be like him. But also, I'm gonna do exactly what he said and become rich. I mean that that's the cycle of abuse for you. Right. I'll, I'll, I'm just thinking, you're no good, Dio! You're just like your father! <laughs> Dio was like my favorite part of the show, so... Uh, I don't blame you! Dio is a fanta fantastic villain! He's like, he's like everything I'm told Reverse Flash is. <laughs> it was me, Jonathan! I... Really Twink Dio is the worst. It's the I'm same reason. The it's the same page. reason why I hate Nagito Komaeda. Like it's the same fucking shit. Well, listen, you can appreciate Dio as a villain. I can't. No, like but I can the still professional be. hater is like what, top five <laughs> category of character. Oh, then you're no. gonna fucking adore Dio. Yeah, no, I'm so excited. <laughs> uh, look. I'll talk about the narrator's roles in the episode two discussion. We have to keep moving, but uh, the narrator is a very big character in this. Carry on. Title card! We get, we'll get the opening in episode two. Uh, it's time for Dio to arrive at the Joestar Mansion, and what a first impression he makes, by which I mean he V-trigger knees Danny and makes Jonathan oh, carry his stuff. A fucking dog. He kicked that dog square in the jaw! And that that wasn't a kick, that you're was a flying knee. You're forgetting one important part to this, and it's the fact that he fucking pays no mind to it after the fact. Like, fucking... Jonathan Joestar pays no fucking heed to it as soon as it happens. He's like, oh, Jonathan no, Joestar is a nice boy! <laughs> He's oh, like, wait, oh no, Danny! Anyway. Wait until JoJo poisons his fucking dog. But well, here's the show. They actually, in the dub, they actually do expl like, explain, like, oh, you know, he, he, Jonathan writes it off as, oh, 
he saw a dog coming at him and panicked that people do that. Which, yes, people do that, actually. That did not look like a dog was coming right for him. No! That was Dio's coming right for that dog. I know, but you could see how he thought that. He's coming at him Kenny style. Yeah. Also, uh, Becky says, God damn it, do I need to design a professional hater business card for Dio? Yes! <laughs> Honestly, whenever I I was thinking about the dog being kicked and everything, it's like, kick the baby! <laughs> Don't kick the baby! the wall damn baby! <sighs> yeah. Naturally, George Joestar loves him instantly. George Joestar sucks. So, either the dad is a huge fucking dick, or he's deaf. Like, there's... It's no the former. Yeah, I was about to say, there's no way he doesn't hear any of the shit that's going on. And then 30 seconds later, you realize, like, oh yeah, this guy's just sick. I'm gonna say this now, being named George Joestar in this series just makes you an asshole. That makes sense. Understood. Uh, Eli says, Jonathan tries to see the best in people. In this case, he was dead wrong, but he tries. Mm. Like, that's, I like that about Jonathan. He's an eternal optimist. Which he's fits that he's voiced he's by Hajime. Like he, he's a bit of a himbo, but he's but he's too he's too smart to be a himbo, because the man's a fucking archaeologist. Look, you, there is such thing as smart himbos occasionally. True. Uh, I want to. Rare form. They're in rare form, to be honest with you. Yes. So at one point, Dio calls himself a poor unfortunate, and I just want to see either Takahito Koyasu oh, or Patrick oh, Sides oh, cover oh, Poor oh. Souls. That's what I was thinking too. As soon as you said. That. Uh, see, okay. He was coming a mile away. Talking Much about the like Kenny saw that fucking Dio coming right for him. Oh no, Rio! He's coming right for us. <laughs> I can't do that joke. We will get the actual himbo JoJo next part. Okay. Uh, yeah, we are. Yeah, but uh, so again with the, the abridged series, uh, we had George Joestar be like, uh, Dio, Dio, talk to JoJo. You get along great. You're both the same age. Both your mothers are dead. The, perfect chemistry. <laughs> and I forgot that was basically what he says in the actual show. <laughs> you both don't have a mother. You've experienced similar trauma. Yeah. Well, let's put these two. Let's put these two sticks of dynamite together and see if they defuse each other. That's a solid plan. It's the 19th century. I need entertainment. I can only yeah, beat the pores for so long. <laughs> My son died coke. You will treat your new brother Mentos as if you were treating my own spawn. <laughs> you won't mind if I shake you both up for a moment, The do villain you? dynamic of JoJo's Bizarre <laughs> That's so good! It's the 19th century they hadn't discovered therapy? True! See, and you and y'all were worried we wouldn't have uh, good chemistry on this podcast. This is going great. Oh, no. It's great. <laughs> we have three episodes to go. Yeah, we're going. We're going fine. We, oh, fuck. We're doing fine. Uh, yeah, it's only just occurred to me how weird it is that this, this, this town has a twelve-year-old boxing for them. Yeah, listen, this is shit you would see on like TikTok for no reason. <laughs> I, I think in the abridged joke we had, uh... And then all of a sudden you're just on scrapyard street beefs for no... I mean, well, what year is it? 18, 1880? Like, child labor laws don't exist yet. True! Uh, it is England. So things, things are fucked up there. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know what they're thinking. They don't know what they're thinking. Ah, <laughs> oh, they're just precocious. <laughs> just, just crappy. Uh, but yeah. I think in the abridged series we put, uh... How did you all get here? It's a town of twelve people. If the Joestars are up to something, we're gonna, we're gonna know. <laughs> Trigger warning: British. <laughs> British. <laughs> yeah, I like that they established Jonathan as a natural fighter, who again would beat Dio here if Dio weren't a heartless bastard. I... They made him an absolute just. I, I, they, they made him an absolute word I cannot say on. Twitch. I'll just put it that way. Douchebag. <laughs> No worse. <laughs> Dio, Dio is fiendish in a way that I yes. cannot take my eyes away that's from. That's actually like, a better, that's a subtle way to put it, yeah. Yes. He's very yeah. much a fiend. <laughs> I forgot. So I forgot we combined three of the words you can't say on Twitch into mm. verp cell. Godspeed. I don't know if you can say that either. <laughs> We're gonna fuck, I, we, we've gotten away with it so far. Yeah. And as an anti, Dio gets all of Jonathan's friends. 
So I thought that was really fucking weird. How are they all riding that hype train so quickly? Also, how are they all his friends? Like, how are they all Jonathan Joestar's friends? It's a small town! I mean, as a southern girl who has seen how bad small towns can get, there are only like a couple of cliques in certain places. Mm. So, if you're the rich kid's family, you're going to have a lot of people that are riding your coattails. Eli, if you're poor, you're going to have a bad time. Eli, you you beat the shit out of that guy. He's got guts. Drinks for everybody. <laughs> um, the first and lesson... Then, good. Oh, sorry. It was just uh, the fact that he's like... And he and he's such a tattletale. Just don't tell him anything. Is there some irony oh, in snitching on somebody that they're a snitch? You're right. You're right, Dio. Look, they're teenagers. They're easily they're easily swayed. Easily swayed by the dude who's literally been in town for two minutes, three minutes. Dio Dio oh. has has always been established as having a very persuasive nature to him. He's he he has a cult of personality about him. Oh, he's just yeah, he's. He, Sorry, how do I put this? Yeah. He would, uh, he would give, I feel as if this man would give Jim Jones a run for his money if he was in the 60s. Yep, yep, absolutely. Uh, the first lesson of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Hmm, yes. (laughs) Yeah, uh, let's see where it takes us. The first lesson of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, nobody likes snitches. Before we get to the unpleasantness, hooray for Victorian romance! Let's get to the unpleasantness. Shit, they, we're at this they part. Really, they really put, they really like, had like a montage of like, oh, then they date without giving her a single line of dialogue. I, yeah. I did wanna, do, uh, no, sorry, go ahead. She, she does talk later, I will say. She, she comes back. Like, I think we mentioned that, but in, in part one, she comes back. So before oh, we get okay. to. Before we get to the unpleasantness, I want to bring up something. How does no one fucking notice that Jojo poisons his own fucking dog? Yeah, um, that was a mistake on a rock part. <laughs> so for those who don't know, uh, you know how chocolate's super poisonous to dogs? Grapes are even more so poisonous yeah, to dogs. To say, do you know that? Did we notice that? How <laughs> did anyone else notice that? And it's just like I was sitting there watching it, and I saw, I saw Jonathan just pop that grape right into Danny's mouth and I'm like hold on a second as the series goes on and the lore gets more complex there's there becomes a meme of Araki forgot this is not that this is Araki pulled an oopsie very funny Araki was in a silly goofy mood uh, Araki was just a silly little guy <laughs> a cute kidney poisoning oops whoops nobody's oh, perfect what's wrong with the dog the missile is very easy what the dog poisoned just a sleepy little guy. Yeah. And he went to sleep. Good night, Mr. The Missile. <laughs> yeah, uh, Becky says, Oh, you have no idea how much of a culty body count Dio can amass newbies. And Eli says, He wrote part one in the 1980s. The internet didn't exist. Fair point. Uh, well, let's address this. Content. The dogs did. <laughs> oh, we're doing a content warning? Yeah, content warning, because we have to briefly discuss assault. Mm. Oh, this is. Yeah, this is. So. I think I can. I, I don't think I'm telling any tales out of school here. Um, Dio would be exactly the kind of character to to force kiss someone. I feel. Yes. I feel like he seems like the type of person to do that, and it's not okay even in an anime. It's yeah. pretty gross. Here, here's what I'll say, because I I wrote another thing about this because it's a very sensitive sure. topic. Sure. Uh, so because Dio sees Erina is making Jonathan happy. He approaches her and forcibly kisses her. This is obviously disgusting and wrong, I want to make that clear. But unlike in a lot of shows, it's very clear that it's meant to be evil, and it's meant to show that Dio is an evil bastard. Oh, but, yeah. You, you could very easily see that all it is to him is a power dynamic. Yes! Just to give one up yes. to I'm going to take every form of happiness away yeah. from you, even this way. Yes. Like, too many shows use shit like this without thinking about what it means and without showing that it's horrible. And, or worse, do it for shock value, or worse, worse, for fan service. So it's not, like, I can't condone it in the story, if that makes sense. Like, I'm obviously not good. I was going to say, if I was, tell me if I'm out of of base here. And I'm not, the the views of John do not not reflect the views of the podcast. But I have to put that disclaimer there so we don't lose any. Mm -hmm. any Um, I feel like... 
God, I'm trying to I'm trying to use my words wisely here. So if anyone sees that it's going poorly, please jump in. <laughs> um, I feel like like it's it's a plot point. It's a plot device just to drive home how much of a piece of shit Dio Brando is as a character. Yes. It doesn't make it okay. No. It doesn't make it okay to utilize it in no, I, any I, fashion, I think but as a point... point that, I think that's part of the point is that we're supposed to find almost everything that Dio does reprehensible. Despicable not, and deplorable. We're not right? supposed to like him at all. That way we can, you know, love to hate the villain that he becomes. Right. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, my... Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt if you were... No, I was actually about to ask what your, what your thoughts were. I... I, I sort of went on this earlier, but, like, I feel like my larger pro like, I mean, obviously, like, at face value, it is a terrible thing, but I think my larger issue with that is that that's, speaking in the terms of the narrative, there's only one female character, and that's kind of her only function in the story. That's, so, yeah, that's fair. That. That's yeah. my big problem with it. Yeah. I, again, the female characters get better. When, okay, can I, can I? Yeah. Can I, yeah, go ahead. To kind of lighten the mood on this, this is the Billy on the Street sequence. Uh, name a woman. <laughs> <laughs> Tario's <laughs> mom. Name a woman. Dio's, Dio's mom, not Tario's mom. <laughs> Close enough. Yeah. <laughs> Do you <have> yeah. <laughs> on a lighter note, there's the meme. I Everyone always forgets that it's, it's preceded by that. Which, sorry, which mean, like, just really quick, which mean is this? Call the Oh, okay. Okay, that's why I was watching the dub. I didn't get the enjoyment of that. Yeah. It, it's, it's, this, it's literally translated in, in the, it, like, it's the, the exact right. same wording. Right. Okay. But uh, I, I, I put it as 1800s gonna 1800s, sadly. Mm. Yeah, I do enjoy the fact that she took a, a little bit back by actually drinking the mud water. That, that was fucking that awesome, was yeah. That was, you are so disgusting, I will drink mud just to get myself clean. That part was great, yes. Uh, by the way, more references uh, I forgot to mention. Uh, would anyone like to take a guess as to what Erin or Pendleton is supposed to be a reference to? Uh, go on. Eleanor Rigby. I hate that. I hate it. That's that's the most stretch one I've seen in a while. That is yeah, just, no, I, I, that was... I, I... Okay, no. and I have a I have a very unpopular opinion. That is as stretched as Robert E.O. Speedwagon. That uh, one's not stretched at all. That was, that okay, sorry. That was, that's okay. literally using all in of the terms, same letters. In terms of the first few episodes, that is the most stretched. Robert E.O. Speedwagon is, I used to think that was really funny, and now I think it's very dumb. <laughs> it is dumb, that's why it's funny. Even Speedwagon is elongated. I, I realize I never mentioned that, but we'll get to it when we get to it. Like I, I, I'm half expecting someone to show up in like one of the next episodes and be like, "Hi, my name is Derek Aft Punk." Uh, uh, so I'm waiting for King Crimson to show up. I, okay, Part five. I, I just, I just want to really quick, just before we sidetrack, I really wanted to pose this. Um, when we get through a lot, when we get further into it, yeah, I really want to do that. You and I watched a video a long time. ago. Oh, we're doing that. Yes. You know exactly. We're what not going to spoil it for the so, others, but yes, because I showed Ariel that. But it's, but yeah, it's, a tier, it's a tier list. Issue, yes, but that's about it. Anyway, to the plot points. Yes, uh, I, I do. I will say when when Stan show up, I have a segment to add, but that's not till part three. Uh, well, then I'm sitting down. Linkara suggested Bachman T Overdrive. That one has not has not happened yet. Overdrive has though, uh, and we'll get to the, in the next set. But uh, I, I want to give you a little hit, little pr preview for part three because we'll probably forget this by then. Coco, you should mention Steely Dan. Yes. Do you want to guess what that was localized to? Um, I believe you've told me this before. Was it Dan of Steel? It was Dan of Steel. That's the silliest and, thing in the world. And I what love. kills me is that is that is Dan of Steel is the only JoJo dub appearance of Grant George, one of my favorite voice actors, That's aka oh Shuichi God. Saihara. <laughs> I wonder how Donald Fagan feels about this. <laughs> some really of the, some of the people love it. But yeah, um, where was I? Uh, yeah. More references. Danny is named after the Loggins and Messina song, Danny's Song. 
wouldn't have even thought that. Yeah, I would. I wouldn't have either. But Google, uh, Google, and the JoJo Wiki helps. Jonathan, frankly, acts appropriately given what Dio did. He tries to beat the fuck out of him. Uh, Dio with the Kokichi energy of, ooh, you want to hit me so bad? <laughs> <laughs> I'll spend the rest of my life in Dio's shadow. I mean, if the fandom is any indication. Mm. <sighs> Much like how Ogre Street. Oh, we'll get to we'll get to Ogre Street. That that's a poll, yeah. That's uh, the fucking. That's. <gasps> All right, keep going. We're getting there, yeah. People always forget the show has really good hand-to-hand -hand combat. Oh yeah, the, the, the martial arts that they use I... are actually really good. Yeah, I like fight scenes a lot. They're so good. This episode alone, we've got Aikido, Queensberry rules, boxing, some left way. Like, this is actual, like, Can I, I, stuff. I want to yeah. make note of one specific move that I didn't even think about until I watched it. Yeah. But it was it was the punch followed by the eye gouge. That's, like that, it's such a good heel move. It was like, I w wouldn't have thought about it, but it was just like the single punch followed by the bang. And I was like, oh, <laughs> that's just insult to injury. Yeah, it's that extra signifier that shows Dio's just a gigantic piece of ass. Oh. So, for fans, that, of martial yeah. arts, for fans of martial arts, that reminds me exactly of what happened to Yuki Nakai. He was a mixed martial artist who uh, got in a fight. His opponent eye gouged him to the point where he is now blind in that eye. Oh, dude, shit. Dude went on to submit him and then make it all the way to the finals. Nice! Oh, yeah, uh, it's so fucking satisfying to see Tio get his ass beat! Oh, yeah, like, it's, that's the that's the moment of catharsis that, like, I think. Because, like, it's... It's a build, that episode of like, all right, we're going to compound all of these reasons why Dio Brando is a piece of shit, and we're going to back it up with his fucking childhood and why, like, we're going to compound it, and then we're going to boil it up to a point, and you, as the viewer, put in the shoes of Jonathan Joestar have dealt with it long enough, and he's going in and just whipping ass. Yeah, it's great. You're like, yeah! <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, and it makes you regret having eaten barbecue while watching that episode. <laughs> I was gonna oh. get to that! That actually oh. happened when I was showing her all these episodes! Oh! What a, what a setup, and but what a knockout. <laughs> Before we get there, I want to point out, uh, Dio's just like, You made me bleed my own blood! George, of course, blames Jonathan. And he actually pulls out the fucking boys will be boys cliche. God, George sucks. My, my, I, like, actually started laughing when, uh, like, <laughs> when Jonathan was like, Wait, that eye gouge thing, he did that on purpose! <laughs> yeah, man, he was there, so were you! Well, yeah, you know, I'm sorry to uh, think this Dio guy is a dick! Fucking shit! He, he did he's purpose. very trusting! You can't do that, that's illegal! <laughs> oh, maybe he, uh, he kick the dog. Uh, maybe he is a... And speaking of the dog! <laughs> oh yeah, let's go ahead. Well, I mentioned, the, I mentioned why Rocky has, has this happened, so dead dog count one. Uh, and that's the episode! Than, is episode one, one ends on a dead... <laughs> like I said, a Rocky knows it's an effective way to establish a villain's an asshole. Yeah. <laughs> And now we get, uh, yeah, the first of jo JoJo's famous licensed e song endings, this one being the, one of the biggest JoJo memes ever. Now, this is the reason why yes! I Literally. started watching the show, because I was like, where is Roundabout? Yep. It's in I parts remember, one and two. No, because here's the thing. I remember, and this is a personal story, I yep. remember coming into your Discord server at one point, and you guys were watching... JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. I can never remember the number, but I remember it ended in a, in like a dark cave with like a door and something happened and you all fucking lost your shit when it happened and then the roundabout thing came on. I was like, that's effective. That might be episode four, actually. I don't know, but I'm like, I'm waiting for it now. I'm waiting for it to hit. It might, anyway. might, yeah, because like I said, part roundabout is used in parts one and two. Shame. Fucking shame. Should be the whole. Don't worry, they have some banger picks oh. in the future. Okay. Uh, so what do we think of this first episode? 
Let's start with uh, I, Server J. I felt like, and as cool as I said it before, is the episode is a glorified establishment of this villain is garbage. Is a piece of garbage. That's the whole point. That's what drives it home. It sets the stage for that and the character of, of Jonathan Joestar, and that is look at this look at this sweet little guy. Why would you hurt him? <laughs> I'm just Other than that, there's a lot of cringy things that happen in this episode, but I'm also saying that because I watched the dub and that's my fault. So <laughs> You ever see uh you ever see one of those images of like the guy aggressively holding the really small plush? Yes. I'm just imagining Jonathan as the plush. That makes sense. Um, I thought it was an okay starter episode. I was like, all right, you know what? I have to give it the three to see how I fully feel about it. So when we get to episode two, I will further elaborate. All right, uh, Coco, what'd you think of episode one? Episode one, um, so I, I've expressed this to you before, but like, yeah. I'm not someone who watches a lot of anime, like at all. Same, 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 uh, same. I think the total amount of anime I've seen is like it's still in the single digits as far as theories go. Um, and so, like, because it's very hard for me to like latch on to something. Yeah. Um, once I see it. And I saw this, and I just saw how the whole dynamic was just gonna be Dio just being like, I'm like, fuck this guy to death. Um, and, and JoJo just being like, <laughs> And like, and like, and like everyone just with Jojo, and then everyone just being like, "Oh shit!" Like Jojo, like he was, he was serious when he said he the was gonna like, yeah. like, <laughs> like he's not fucking <laughs> around. Oh shit! Oh fuck! Um, like, like what was it? What's that line from Resident Evil Two? Like, uh, this thing won't die. Like, yeah, um, yeah. That's it. Like, seeing that that was gonna be like the whole dynamic, and like seeing that carry through to the next. It's episode, pretty good, isn't it? Okay. I think I'm on board with this. Yeah. <laughs> I'm serious. Just a quick question, uh, Rock. Or Rock, what is the single anime that you have watched? I haven't seen a. I said single digit. I've seen. Okay, what's seen, the single digit anime that you? Watched? I've seen the Kirby anime sub and dub. I, I saw, love that. That's the first one you went with. I saw. That was the first one I ever saw. <laughs> okay, fair, fair. Um, I saw Evangelion. Um, okay, that's a perfect one to watch. I saw. What else? I, I mean, I well, she knows season. Shinji, so. Yeah. Uh, okay. Casey did a wonderful job, by the way. Um, oh, yeah. I saw, like, the first season of Mob Psycho. So um, good. So and good. I'm currently about halfway through Revolutionary Girl Lieutenant. Oh, Becky's going to be very happy hearing that. And yeah, I'm watching it with a very dear friend of mine, City Pop. Yeah. So, I, um, you just, since you mentioned fucking Evangelion, I just have a quick story before we continue, and that was the, I... I watched that with a, a other, another group of friends uh, in a server lovingly known as the go to bed server. Um, <laughs> and I'll never forget this. There's this one guy who never watched the series at all. And like I had, I had caught parts of it. I knew what was coming. And he was like getting bored by the series. Absolutely fucking bored. And he's like, oh my God, this is going to be over. And we got to a specific episode. Now, spoiler, it gets dark. Yeah, no <laughs> shit. And there's one, and the memory I have is him leaving the room, and him coming back, and suddenly Shinji is just choking Asuka. And he You're... came back to that and was like, what the fuck? And I'm like, oh, missed it. Did you miss that? It's like Donald Glover walking in with the pizzas. Yeah, he's nah, like, you should have left. Yeah. Yeah. You're telling me Hideaki Anno's therapy session got dark? No, not at all. Oh, you just reminded me. I didn't get to see um, Shin Kamen Rider when it was in theaters. Oh, I've heard it's so good. Wait, did he do? Did he do that? Yeah, he did. He's done all the Shin ones. Yeah, oh, Shin, wait, Ultraman, Shin wait. Godzilla, Shin Kamen Rider. That's all Hideaki Anno. Yeah. But are you kidding me? He he only did movies and named them Shin. No, no. Shin is a like hack. Absolute hack. <laughs> Shin Kamen Rider has Kamen Rider come punching up, Nazis come through the head. Up with a better name, God, unbelievable. It blows my mind. It's like, what were they thinking? What were they thinking? Ariel, what do you think of this first episode? Let's face it, Hideki. <laughs> it was ruined. Honestly, first impression of it was it is a good intro into everything. Um, Dio is an absolute ass. And like I said, terrible timing to eat barbecue. <laughs> as as Fecky said, uh, 
To quote a Mystery Science Theater if I once sink to a clip of this episode, we're going to change the dog's name to Crispy. Crispy Bacon. Also, Eli Yo. says uh, to Coco, you should finish both Mob Psycho and Utena. I agree. Got it. Oh, speaking of fucked up shit with dogs, I did start <laughs> the Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. <laughs> I stopped at the episode you think I would have. Oh yeah, I, I've, I've always seen a bit of Brotherhood, but I know that. Yeah. Oh um, man, that's funny. Yeah, Several my husband oops. never saw it until I showed that to him, and that was one of the first episodes he saw. <sighs> this is like the first episodes in the show. Wait, what'd you think of, uh, of episode one? I mean, kind of just building off what everyone else said, it, it's a setup episode, really, like, there's, we're getting a lot of exposition, we're getting a lot of, not necessarily character development, just a lot of details given to us, um, so we don't really get a chance to see what the, sh the show is going to be like, although we do get a taste of the craziness, um. It and tastes like, like Bird Dog. <laughs> not a good taste. No. Not great. Yeah, we get, we get, we get. It makes us like, like I said, it's all set up. We get to see that Dio is a huge fucking asshole. Uh, we get to see that uh, JoJo is the Picaro, and yeah, it's it makes a good enough set, good enough setup that you're intrigued to watch the next episode and see where it goes. Yes. And now that we've gotten an episode done, let's talk about the narrator. He is just as important as any character, so we'll discuss who's playing him. In English, it's David Vincent, who is Grim Joe and Bleach. Richter Belmont, Richter Belmont in what I assume was the redub of Symphony of the Night, Jin Kurosagi in Blaze Blue, T Hawk in Street Fighter, Martial Law in Tekken, Robin in Fire Emblem, Gilgamesh in Fate, Tokugawa in Mob Psycho, Kibito Kai in Dragon Ball Super, Senkets in Kill la Kill, and Kento Nanami in Jujutsu Kaisen. Yeah. In Japanese, it's Toru Okawa, who was several Muppets, including Rolf, Oscar the Grouch, Cookie Monster, Snuffleupagus, and the Count. Uh, which I said, well. Uh, Jojo is basically the Muppet of anime. It would be very funny if, like, Frank Oz was narrating this whole time, like... <laughs> Statler and Waldorf for the Jojo narrators? Holy shit! There's the character I wish I was! Dio? Jonathan? No, the dog! <laughs> Somebody end me! <sighs> but yeah, he was also Aquaman and Superman animated, uh, Pachakamak, the El Echidna Elder in Sonic Adventure, Ryu and Goku in Street Fighter, Coach McGurk in Home Movies, <laughs> <laughs> nice. That's the greatest connection. <laughs> Jonathan, here's what you gotta do, Jonathan. I found out what my stand does. Oh, what does it do? Stands up and leaves. <laughs> 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 uh, Clank and Ratchet and Clank. <laughs> Iago in Kingdom Hearts and Aladdin. Optimus Prime in Transformers Armada. Roy Mustang in Full Metal Alchemist. Toyama in Oeda Rocket. Rock in Soul Calibur. Benson in Regular Show. <laughs> Sawada so and Erased. They got Iago and Benson to be the same voice actor. Yep. I, I can't remember the context, but I was watching KZ Excellence Weekly Jam, and the start of the episode, someone just goes, Dude, Benson's gonna come in our mouths when he hears this. <laughs> I don't uh, think I like that. I don't think I enjoy that. Also, also <laughs> Detective Pikachu, Sengoku in One Piece, and Rufus Shinra in the Final Fantasy VII Remake. All right, it's 1888. Let's check in with the streets of London. Surely everything's all right, Jack the Ripper. Now, <laughs> I want you to guess. Will this be relevant? Yes. I feel like it will, but I also want to note something just to decide a uh, I believe this was episode two, so. Yeah. How jarring was it to see Dio and Jonathan broing out? Like Not in that first thinking. few minutes. Yeah. How how weird was that? Pretty weird. That Tripping a was, bit ahead, but that's fine. That was pretty weird. Like, I, I was like, they hate each other so much. Yeah, I have something on that. Saying, we, we missed okay. something over those seven years. Yeah. I, I've i seen enough, like, bitter, bitter high school rivalries to be like, yeah, like, they're... I was think I was thinking when they were when they were like talking at football like I bet they're both thinking like awful things about each other and then the episode they... just verbalized it all and I'm like okay yeah I know that uh, mask attack and we it's time for our first JoJo opening hot take all of the JoJo openings are ten of the ten bangers like this one this is Sonochi no Sada made by Hiroaki Tami Tominaga it rules what do y'all think oh fucking so it got me hyped honestly it's so good the all oh, I'm fun. I'm biased because like I like I I I someone showed me like the part two opening oh, like, so good. years ago. 
And so I prefer that one. I'm, like, I'm not saying this one's better, really but good. yeah, they're all they're all just great. Like the the baseline is fantastic. Oh yeah. Uh, but just that moment where Jonathan clenches his fist and it turns into fire, and he's walking up the stairs. Remember, remember that. Yeah. Uh, mm, for more I'll detail. Get... For more detail on how awesome this opening is, I recommend Mother's Basement's video, What's in an OP, about uh, about this. Uh, Jonathan and Dio are both young adults now, they are about 20, having grown into the bar proportions y'all expected from early JoJo. The rugby probably assisted with that. Big bar, rugby. tiny head. Now, rugby, the British NFL. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, so yeah, Jonathan's the fucking bulldozer. <laughs> yeah, why yes, were they playing did. American football? <laughs> They're in England. <laughs> <laughs> so many people are gonna be like, I would love. Uh, I'm just checking the, the chat. Uh, so I would love to see a Muppet version of a JoJo fight. <laughs> it's just a slap fight. That'd be pretty great. That'd be pretty great. I um. You. <laughs> Miss Piggy would kick ass. <laughs> Well, I mean, we saw Miss Piggy quoting Kamen the other day. <sighs> yeah. Oh, yeah, Jonathan and Dio are best pals now. How about that? There's a joke to be made about Jonathan and Dio being an archaeologist and a lawyer, respectively. That's so weird. Right? Yeah. Uh, You're not a real lawyer. I would love it if Dio said what he was thinking out loud and didn't realize it. It's, it's like in Yu-Gi-Oh! These fools do not realize that I am medic! Uh, so yeah, Dio's been poisoning George, not that George would notice. Speaking of Muppets, go to a fucking doctor, Jim Henson! I, just, my thought was, for s how long has he been poison- how long has he been poisoning George again? Uh, undisclosed. Okay. So, it could have been for seven years, in small doses. Could have been for seven days, we don't know. Yeah. I, I, I was thinking, like, like, it was like, I need to go, like, he needs the answer. I'm like, does he? Sounds like things have been like this way for a while. Why, why, why are you in a hurry right now? He must keep like, up like, British politeness. It seemed like the worst symptom he had was a cough. Becky says the only adaptation, uh, American adaptation of JoJo I will accept now are the ones where the human characters are played by real actors and the stands are Muppets or vice versa. Also, That's... can I say I like how he refuses to go to the hospital because of how expensive it is? Like, what is this, the, the U.S. healthcare system? Yeah, right? Uh... It's like, and it was sort of like the way that in Willy Wonka, no, stop. Stop, don't, don't come back. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, and now Jonathan knows about the poisoning. Hope we can get proof. And we have our first JoJo pose. Oh, the first. <laughs> Deal with the I won't be your friend anymore gambit. <laughs> Swear to me on your father. My father was a prick! Shit. And then Dio goes off the fucking railing. I went off the royals. <laughs> hey. I'll be here all week, folks. Uh, Jonathan gets a lot of shit for not being as cerebral as the other JoJo's, but he's not an idiot. He's just overly trusting. Yes. I feel bad for the butler. He's, he's trying to do his job. Oh, no, not again. <laughs> <sighs> says, I like how when Jonathan's like, I'll go and get proof, Dio just doesn't kill him while he's gone. That, well, that'd just be ob that would, he'd just be suspect number one. That is true. I didn't think about that. I was like, yeah. Why didn't he just kill him? Yeah, the reason he's be, he'd be the prime suspect. It's like you clearly have a lot of poison. Just put all of it in there. I like how he does say though he, that he's gonna commit the perfect crime, and then he just busts open a locked drawer. <laughs> yeah, <it's>, yeah. <laughs> this will require all my cutting. I mean, why didn't he just put the poison in JoJo's room? You would think that would put it to where it was like, Oh, no, it wasn't me. JoJo's been framing me. He blamed it on Jonathan and George would agree. George would be dead. But yeah, he'd probably still agree. Ugh. Sherlock Joestar is on the case. And oh no, Ogre Street, the East LA of fictional London. It's apparently a reference to Ogre Battle from Queen. Snowcat attack! Dead dog count, two. Because they mentioned the cat was carrying a dog in its mouth. That, that, that scene was so weird, because it was just like, um... Uh, well, I'm in this dangerous town. Oh my god, that cat's holding a dog in its mouth. Immediate jump to the fight. <laughs> yeah! Oh, the cat was eating the dog, excuse me. It's like, 
Oh my god, that's fucked up. <laughs> I really like that they decided to give Oddshot more work. Yeah! That, that was my joke, too. <laughs> See, I, I went slightly different. Blade Hat! This dude must have inspired surviving edged weapons! I was gonna say, it's fucking... No, it's, uh, what's it from... The only thing I thought of was James Bond, to be honest with you. Right? That's what they're saying, odd job. No, I know, I know that that's what you're saying, yeah, but I was like, that's literally the only thing I could think of, and I was like, how did they not, like... How did that not get a direct reference in name? <laughs> to, to be honest with you. hundred years difference. They, they, should, they should have called him, like, the, the knockoff one from Austin Powers. Like, random, random task? <laughs> yeah. Uh, we're, talking, we're, we're skipping over the part where... Jonathan grabs a blade and threatening threatens to sledgehammer the guy's nuts. That was yeah, awesome. I'm gonna tell you, he was a fucking Billy badass. In his fight that's a that's a good contender for moment of the week. No fucks. And Wait. honestly, you could tell that Ario fell in love with him, right? Yeah. Speaking of, this is Robert E.O. Speedwagon. Yes, really. He's voiced by Keith Silverstein, who we of course know best as Mondo Awada. And on that oh. note, by the way, since you talked about REO Speedwagon, my Taco Bell's here, so I'll be right back. Okay. Well, while he's gone, he's also Usagi's dad in the Viz Dub of Sailor Moon, Koyama from Mob Psycho, Zosalamel in Soul Calibur, Makin and Gabal in Gurren Lagan, Simon Belmont in Castlevania. Oh, hmm? oh we got kitty cat. Uh, yeah. Sorry, my cat was attacking my foot. You're good. Uh, Johan Liebert in Monster, Vector the Crocodile in Sonic, Hunk in Resident Evil, Tom Tanaka in Dorara, Zong Lee. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry, Hunk and Vector are the same voice. Yes, <laughs> and so much more because he's also <laughs> Zong Lee in Genshin Impact, Hisoka in Hunter Hunter, Cyborg 005, Torbjorn in Overwatch. Oh my God. Shido in Persona 5, Doctor Wily in Mega Man 11, Barry in Amphibia, Chairman Rose in Pokemon Twilight Wings, Masamichi Yaga and Ultimate Mechamaru in J Jujutsu Kaisen. Loki and Vinland Saga, and so many got more goddamn characters. So many of the JoJo cast is full of voice acting legends, my god. And all of them remember Armando. Excuse me, Zhongli. Okay, sorry, what are we talking about? I just got back. Jay, now that we're back, we'll continue the discussion. Yes, go ahead. Because I wanted to wait for you to be here for discuss Speedwagon's Japanese voice actor, Yoji Ueda. Oh. This okay. is one that's brief. Uh, I'm going to save the, the funniest role for last. He was Gamakichi in Naruto, Agohige, Agohige in Fullmetal Alchemist, Charles Dickinson in Banana Fish. I'm sorry, excuse me? Yeah, there's a show called Banana Fish. From what I understand, it's about gay cops. Uh, what the fuck? I've heard it's okay. Soundwave and Wheeljack in Transformers Cyberverse, Leif Erikson in Vinland Saga, Aki's Thank dad in... Yep, Vinland Saga is great. You should see it. Aki's dad in Chainsaw Man, Vandra in Fire Emblem, and I swear to God, this is real, he's the Japanese voice of Squidward. <laughs> Inga Dinka Durgan. Even Squidward is afraid. SpongeBob, why are you it. burning your house down? <sighs> I feel like Ogre Street is like Iguana Street from that one Dragon Ball Z move, uh, bridge movie. <laughs> Squidward holding the, the, the stone mask. This one's on the house. <laughs> <laughs> The pincers can't get to Squidward's brain because his nose is so far stuck out. <laughs> King Shark in the Suicide Squad where, like, none of the Staros could get on his face because he's too big. A face turn for Speedwagon. Is this where I point out the best ship for speed for part one is Jonathan, Arena, and Speedwagon? Can I... I want to make a mention, by the way. Is it a common motif for any... Any... Minor bad guy? In JoJo's Bizarre Adventure to do a face turn? Yes. That happens a lot. Yes, it happens a lot. Okay. Uh, but yeah, there's a meme of, that is Speedwagon is best waifu. Checks out. Okay. That checks out. If I had a nickel for every Keith Silverstein character who was obviously queer-coded in the anime, okay, well, I'd have at least two nickels as Keith had, like, 500 rolls. Uh, another reference, Cronenberg Whiskey. Anyone catch that? David I Cronenberg? Cronenberg. I noticed that. Yeah, we're gonna get some Cronenberg and shit going. Is it like all? Oh god! I just time to time to test the mask. What it do? It makes vampires. Is what it do? Now going into this, who knew there was vampires in this? No, that's I did why not. So but when I saw I the mask, I was like, oh, some goosebump shit's gonna go down. That was. I like to classify a lot of things by. This is where the the, the other shoe drops. Yes. So I want to, there's a, a great example, and I'm not even using anime, I'm using just a general, yeah. like I won't say twist, because like a twist implies like a plot twist. I mean like something happens, and the tone of the 
medium shit. So yeah. my favorite example of that is, have you guys ever seen the movie Parasite? The, the I need to. I really need to. Oh, yes. Uh, I, have. A, I forget the exact time code, but there's a specific moment in the film where... Yeah, it's about two-thirds of the way through. About two-thirds of the way through, a basement door opens up. And that's when the entire movie gets dark. Nice. I need to see it. It's... it's um, I want to watch it with you just for that. Oh, so boy. Another, another, like... Sorry, go ahead. I have, I have another example. Um, I don't know if any of you have seen The World's End by Edgar Wright. Oh, yes! 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 Yep, at the end absolutely. of... Absolutely. my favorite movie of all time. Favorite movie of all time. Hands down. Um, at the end of Act 1, I'm not going to say what happens, yeah. but, like, it... It both, like, fully flips on its head and also very much becomes what it was building up to. Yeah, sure. I'm, I'm going to give another one of these kind of movies. Uh, Banshees of Inner Sharon. I, okay, I so I would one. recommend that to... one. So it's like the... a, I've heard it's a dark comedy, but it's just... The, fir the first <laughs> half of the movie is like a very dry Irish comedy. Uh, it's made by the same guy, the same director who did In Bruges, so it yes. uh, has that very kind of dry tone to it. Mm -hmm. And about halfway through, the tone changes and it gets dark. Just dark and morbid, and it, it it was completely unexpected. I got one. Ready or not? My brother uh, keeps asking me to watch that with him. It's so I'm good. Really it's such it. a good horror comedy. Ready or not's good, but you kind of like. Was that the what we're talking movie? about more is like. Yep. We're talking about more is like it starts as one thing, and it becomes absolutely not that thing. Oh, then in that okay. case, oh, I thought go. I, I I was gonna say I got one then that fits that. Dust till dawn. Yes! Oh, yeah. oh, fucking lootly yeah. So, Barbarian, and, maybe? Barbarian would be a great example. I saw that in theater. That was crazy. Anyway, so, my point that I make when I reference that is, um, as soon as the mask comes into play and you find out why it's there and what it does, you go, oh, this is a really bizarre adventure now. <laughs> yes! It's, we're just getting started. This is uh, I really hope someone just says started that the, the bizarre. Here's the thing. Uh, well, let me scroll up for comments here. Uh, it make it makes vampires by unlocking hidden potential in your brain. This is sort of explained in part two. So it's like the Lazarus machine from Doctor Who. I suppose so. Uh, this is why humans only use ten percent of their brains. If we use hundred percent, we'd be a vampire. Exactly. Uh, yeah, vampire lore is so fucking nebulous. This is frankly not super strange to me. This seems I'm not gonna lie, that example, that explanation was very stupid to me. <laughs> oh, I mean, it, it's a good kind of stupid to me. Yeah, I mean, I, that's what I mean. Like, it was just yeah, cheesy. Yeah. So yeah, instead of biting the neck, they jammed their fingers into the neck and drained the blood that way. Holy shit! Dang it. That yeah. was brutal. Yeah, it honestly reminded me of like. Uh, you know how back whenever we were all kids, we would stick the pins through our skin? <gasps> that's it. Is that a yes? Yeah, yeah I'm not exactly actually, I'm not actually going with that. That's what I felt. That's just what I felt. <laughs> so yeah, Sunlight's the only, the vampire's only weakness in this, but it kills them dead. And we get the first of our proper to be continued segues. What do we think of episode two? This is where I realized, holy shit, it's gonna yeah, be, this is, this it's is gonna where be a wild fucking ride. This is where it kicks it into sixth gear. Yeah. I feel that. I mean, this is this is my own, like, this is my own just personal preferences coming out. I do wish we got to spend a little more time with, like, the bickering younger versions of them. Uh... Cause like I feel I feel like in like these sort of like rivalry stories we don't like get enough of that. Right. Of like of like when they're like of like when everything is so big, like when you're a kid and like the dad has a larger role. I wish yeah. we got like one more I, mean, I, that. I think that was our, our consensus opinion or main criticism about this episode was that it skipped over all of that uh, relationship building slash animosity between Jojo and It makes it feel very like like it still makes it feel like the characters are very one note, but at the same time, it's like, all right, there's a tiny bit of like growth, but it turns out that growth is kind of fake. It's kind of like a mask for the real feelings between them. Huh, a mask, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> we gonna move on to the next episode? Oh uh, yeah. 
Oh, actually, apparently, yeah, this is the expanded version, believe it or not. As I mentioned, the Phantom Blood movie, yeah. Uh, episode 3, Youth with Dio. Time to, for Jonathan to, to confront Dio. And I forgot that Dio got his shoulder broken. I was distracted by all those crocodile tears. I couldn't find the post I was looking for, but there's a, there was a great Tumblr post going around about part one. I was essentially like, uh, uh, Dio's defense is, Oh, Jonathan, I am a poor British man. That's that explains my actions. And Speedwagon comes in and is like, I, I'm a poor British man too. This man's just a freak. <laughs> Something to that effect. Jonathan, it's my birthday. <laughs> Happy I'm birthday, you piece of shit. I'm just a little guy. Speedwagon comes in and is like, I delivered his cake three months ago. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what he asked for for his birthday? Poison. <laughs> Happy birthday, you piece of shit. Poison labeled poison for George Joestar. He just gave me back a, a, a little sheet of paper that said, fuck you, Jonathan. <laughs> I, I think we did a similar joke in the abridged when, when Danny got burned. The criminal left a note. It was me, love Dio. It's a mystery for the ages. <sighs> yeah, so this is Wang Chan, the, prison, the poisoner. I thought that was the... You said that three times already! No, I, so I'm gonna repeat it a lot throughout this. I, I will agree with you this one. This one's bad. I thought it was no. great that they gave Vegeta a role. If this, this. was. No, we're, trying, we're talking about the name, Lee. If this was. That's the joke. Yeah. If that was. Um, if that was their way. What was that? What was that? Everybody, Wang Chong tonight. Yeah, what was the. I was trying to think. Was it just the band called Wang Chong? Wang Chong, yes. Was that their way of trying to shoehorn a music reference in? Y yes. That that happens with a lot. No, I know. It has, there's the reason why my favorite name exists. It almost was the name of this podcast. Oh, Worst Company? Yeah. Worst Company. That's, a, that's in part four. Yeah. Bizarre Adventure Podcast. Uh, yeah. Uh, he does have lines, turns out. He's voiced by Doug Stone, who was Psycho Mantis. What a ah. great pick. I don't have You've all of his all of his roles. Zelda, haven't you? I totally forgot to to get his roles, but I wanted to men be sure I mentioned Psycho Mantis. He's... That's all you need to say. It's Psycho Mantis. He's okay. a great pick. Yeah. You've been watching JoJo's, haven't you? I have. Wasn't he also a uh, fucking? Wasn't he fucking Guam and Gurren Lagann? I don't know if he fucked Guam and uh, Gurren Lagann. He was Guam and Gurren Lagann. Yeah. Oh, he was Dayaka too. Okay. I didn't realize Jaika and Guam were the same. I really like her in Lagon. Uh, we've noticed, Gross, and we've noticed. And in Japanese, it's Hiroshi Naka, who was uh, Garp in One Piece. Oh, he was Chapel in Trigon Stampede. And <laughs> and the the, uh, the Otari tribe leader in Tribe 9. That's fun. Nice. Tribe 9 is fun. It's it's Kadaka's take on extreme baseball. Dog uh, and Ropa, that baseball. Yeah, seriously. What if Whoops, all Leon. Yeah. Uh, Dio's going for another scheme. Will it work? I mean, kind of. He, you know what? I will give him it, because if we're talking about the scheme that I think it is, when, uh, or, I was gonna say, the scheme I'm thinking of is, I think, a little later. This uh, is the scheme where he's gonna put on the mask. That's what I mean, where he, he's like, can you just put these handcuffs on me? Please. Stabby, stabby! I want you to do it. Stab vampire powers. Let's go. Yeah. Also, uh, Eli said earlier, oh, the poison. The poison killed George Joestar. That poison. Yeah. But yeah Could uh, you imagine if, like, when 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 Dream did, like, that unface reveal, if that fucking happened to him? <laughs> I'd be terrified. I reject my humanity, YouTube. Oh, by the way, yeah, that's... It, it, they don't say it in the dub, but, uh... As in the sub, as Dio puts on the mask, he says, "Quote: I reject my humanity, Jojo." That's a badass. Line. It's That's so awesome. good. That's better than anything I got in. <laughs> yeah, I, I like the dub, but it sometimes leaves out crucial things, like particularly with Dio. We'll get to that in a bit. Uh, I would love if the cops fired two seconds earlier and Dio just died right here. It'd be so funny. Would have would have been a shorter series and would have. It would have been helpful. It would have been like if Breaking Bad took place in Britain. <laughs> yeah. It would have been one episode and we'd be out. We get the chemotherapy and that's it. See, if yeah. this one takes place in America, these cops just shoot on sight. 
Just right. swap them. Yeah, you're right. And now Jonathan can contact George's power at any time, for he is the sage of shitty parenting. As soon as he as soon as he gets stopped putting out the ring, I was, I was thinking of Tears of the Kingdom. Uh Wow, Dario really went for broke on that one. Like, Dario Brando was not only pure evil, he was a fucking idiot. Just like George. Speaking of, George, why are you standing up for Dio, you doormat? Yeah, so I, that was that was the one thing me and Melissa fucking pointed out were watching it. And <laughs> we're like, this whole series, this could have been avoided. Dio's existence could have been avoided if George just said, lock him up. The fuck you mean you don't hate Dio? George died as he lived, being a fucking moron. And somehow, he's not the worst George Joe star. And that is a very scary thought. But don't worry, we won't, go, we won't get to that George Joe star for a long time. I can't wait to no longer be able to keep track of all these characters. I just want to say, at one point during all of this, uh, in the sub, uh, Mario Speedwagon starts calling people a spoon-fed blokes. And I, <laughs> I remember that. Again, he hearing Mondo call someone a bloke is really funny. Also, just as a quick... A quick thing, and the moment I think I just want to say is I think the moment I tuned out oh, from the dub, the moment I tuned out on the dub specifically with Robert EO Speedwagon was when he was like, he was like, we may have beat him up, but he let us live. What a true gentleman he is. I think it might be like, in the sub too. I was like, shut the fuck up. That feels like it's in the sub too. <sighs> Looks, Steve like is just a very gay man. He is very in love. Yeah, you can tell he's sick. He just really wants to be in love. Yes, like. Uh. I just, I really, I really like how like every single person has the same interaction with JoJo, where he's like, "Oh, he was not kidding." Yeah. <laughs> JoJo has the same interactions with JoJo. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think Araki may have some parental issues. Mm. Also, oh, yeah, when uh, when George, I, mean, I get it. When George is like, uh, "Well, I get to die in the arms of my beloved son," I'm just like, "Dio, come here and let me die on you." <laughs> <laughs> also, I, I I hated that uh, as he was dying, he started pulling up. I'm sorry about all the tough love. No, you were just a fucking ass. <laughs> really? Like he was just a gigantic piece of shit, and now he's dead. Uh, I will say. Uh, there's there's some really gorgeous shots in this. Uh, a body has not been discovered. Three seconds later, now one has. Is the, can we talk about the inspector standing at the window and Dio just cleaves his fucking head in half yeah. with his I hands? That. that was I did have that was about cool. That. That. that was you know what that reminded me of? Oh God, Rosie, you know what? Oh, what man? Resident Evil Seven, the cop with the shovel. Yes. Oh yeah. Oh. Just clean. Clean off his face. It is always a good way to get shock value for your audience. It's so good! It, it, it reminded me of another terrible movie that I. I just keep on naming terrible movies, I think, is my thing now. Um, Ghost Ship. Oh, oh my god! Okay. Ghost Ship, Ship is like. Nuts. Ghost Ship is, is, like, is like a bad movie with an awesome opener. It is, yeah. yeah. Like, it is, I would argue, it's one of the best openers to a bad movie. <laughs> <sighs> but yeah, that's the that's the way that that uh, head coming off reminded me of was the ghost ship version. I will say there's a really great line in the dub from Speedwagon. Uh, okay. If that's not a mortal, then I'm the queen. Told you he was gay as fuck. <laughs> uh, I was skipping a little bit ahead though. Nice shot, Jonathan. Shame it didn't do shit. Uh, <laughs> can I just say? Can I just say here that this was the point in the anime where I realized. The main characters all have fucking dope mullets. Yeah, I mean it's the yeah. 80s. Yeah, I was gonna say this is this, this is I, it's the 1880s, not the 1980s. Well, it was written yeah, in the 80s say, though. I was gonna say the 1880s. They may have popularized the mullet then, and then it was a throwback in the 1980s. Yeah, uh, I wrote down a human Capri Sun. <laughs> the colors in this are so striking. I'm gonna tell you right now that whole like that that how do I describe it? I guess, you know what, the best way I can say with the, the human... The that, big suck? The big suck, yes. That, that's... Not, she keeps sucking. 
made me cringe as hard as the the dub accents is what I really want to <laughs> say. Like that was as soon as it happened, I was like, oh. And then so whenever, cool and whenever Robert E.O. Speedwagon talked, I was like, oh. <laughs> why, why are you picking on, on Keith Silverstein? So, well, if, if he dies due to big suck and goes, go oh, blimey, I'm going to have a fucking... <laughs> Don't worry, Speedwagon. Oh, this is where I get to point out the thing I've been saying all, all episode. So, I don't remember if it was, like, a fan translation or if this is from the official manga. But at one point, like, when everyone's reacting to, uh... <laughs> To the awful things happening. Yeah, to the her, the horrors around them. Yeah. Uh, there's this panel. Could it be he's drawing it out? Dio sucks of human life energy. Is he no longer human? What does he become? God! Even Speedwagon is afraid! <laughs> and that's why I've been saying stuff like that the entire episode. <laughs> Even Speedwagon is afraid is a big meme. Uh, everyone always forgets about the spear, by the way. Even though it gets an awesome kill, like the the, uh, the fucking the, the vampire that attacks Speedwagon and, and Jonathan just cleaves that fucker in half. Oh, okay, yeah, yes, that, that was really cool. He, like grabs his face. Yeah, that was sick. All of the gore animation is so well done. So good. I for like the first few episodes, this is a brutal. This is a brutal fucking episode. Each part only gets more brutal, by the way. I know. Especially with body horror. Something that I just really like about, like, on on the subject of the animation, something I really like is how, like, you know, the they're not very static with their color choice. Like, <laughs> how in some scenes, like, the, the characters will be, like, like, I remember, what was his name? Jon Jonathan was, like, shaded entirely, like, green. Oh, yeah. And, like... Uh, Dio was like a hot pink, just so they could stand in direct contrast to each other. Yeah, that's emulating the manga. Too. Like the it's manga very, does that a lot. As well. I really like that. Um, I don't know. I don't know how often anime does that, but I liked it in this one. It specifically <laughs> does it in this one because it emulates the manga because the manga changes colors yeah. a lot. It definitely adds um, a lot of emphasis to what's going on. Yeah, it a really recent does. Movie that I saw did that, and I liked it. <laughs> and uh, my next joke is, uh, what's behind curtain number one? Fire. <laughs> Like, just That's opening the, the curtain and the house. wall of flame? I, w I was expecting there just to be, like, the body, the other bodies hiding there as a distraction. That'd be funny. Fire. Uh, ooh, what a feeling. Stuck and pray on the ceiling. <laughs> Honestly, um, back to the fire thing is like, <laughs> fire. Fire, fire! Uh, Jonathan's just like, may the flames guide you to heaven. Oh, honey, he ain't going to heaven. I want to. I want to note, by the way, and I think this is. And this might be jumping ahead a little bit. Yeah. But um, so the scene in which, um, like it's right when, or when Dio basically like drops Jonathan and he's like about to fall into the fire. Yeah. And somehow, by the grace of God, he manages to utilize his belt. We're get, you're getting there. We're getting a bit ahead. Okay. That, before the, before we're like right that, before it. Yeah. Before that, um, when they get to the roof, this was one of two parts of the episode where I just put off on repeat. I just couldn't stop laughing when Dio breaks through going... <laughs> oh, yeah. That, here's what I get to talk about that. So, you want to know why he does that? Is that is, is that King King character? No. He's saying... <laughs> which is to emulate a guitar chord. <laughs> I swear to God, that's real. No, hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, so edgy, like one second. Kind of right, imitate a guitar. Oh, excuse me, just one second. Yeah. Okay. Ah. You're grabbing your guitar, aren't you? Yes. Can you uh, can you do me a favor? And play one, yeah. Hang on. Yeah, it sounds exactly like. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> I mean, it's like it's direct from the manga. King DDDO. <laughs> but yeah. DDD is the king of the show. Kill Holler and Hogan with the the boot. DDD is the one. I thought we knew this guy. <laughs> I knew it. But yeah. Uh, Spear, by God! And here's where I have to play. This was this was the second part that I kept repeating over and over. I think is the yeah. I think it's the same line. So yeah. this line is one of my fa it's another meme from this show. It's one of my favorite bits of English from the Japanese track. Get back. 
Goodbye, Jojo! Goodbye, Jojo! He sounds like Kermit the Frog! I was gonna say, it sounds like Leroy Jenkins. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, Jojo! 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 Goodbye,
Yeah, like, the, the forest kiss was, like, the only part where I was really just, like, okay. Like, Fair. Yeah, like, that, I think that's, on, guys. we're all in agreement with that. The well, I, th I, think, I think also, like, again, on the larger scale, just, like, the, the non-acknowledgement of, of, of Aaron as a character yeah. with agency. <laughs> I, I, I yeah, told them the access stop in part three. In comparison to all of you, I seem like a problem. <laughs> <laughs> That's just because he went first. I was trying to be, trying to bring comedy to yes. it. Well, we can do that with favorite moment. Hmm. I'll go first. My favorite moment is goodbye, JoJo. Yeah, mine's either that or. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't, I don't mean to be contradictory. But I think mine might have been any time they wear accents. That's fair. It's it's very much an opinion so thing. Me. You're dead to me. <laughs> <laughs> Get back here. We have a podcast to do. This is only the first episode. Well, uh, it's gonna be my very last episode. You get back here. Goodbye. Like, I think I think I think also just like <laughs> goodbye, Coco. <laughs> It was good. It was good being on. Thanks for having me. Good meeting you, sir. No, uh, so I think okay. I'll be real with you. I think my favorite part of all the episodes was the was the fight scenes. Yes, I think they're very well choreographed. They're very well done. Fair. It's a Fair. good way to sell me on this. Fair. Honestly, it, I'm in the same boat. I honestly thought that the fight scene at the very end was probably my favorite. That or actually the reveal that he was still there for DL. The cliffhanger. <laughs> Yeah, the cliffhanger. I actually enjoy the cliffhanger. Good. I, I will give an, a shout out to uh, the spear kill. That oh, shit was sick as hell. I forgot about spear kill. Or, oh. or the inspector kill. Yeah, the, the, the inspector kill was amazing. Uh, I, I, I also any any moment like uh, like any moment where like where like. D, like Jonathan's just trying to have like a normal conversation with Dio. Dio is like, I'm going to fucking kill you. Yeah. Dio, do you want chocolate or vanilla? I'm going to fuck your brain. So chocolate? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was another thing I wanted to mention too. <laughs> it is so obvious that there was so much fanfiction that was going to be wrote about be between JoJo and Dio in that first few minutes of that episode of episode two. Because them being bros for just that minute there, you know that that sailed a lot of shit. <laughs> Sorry, I just say, like say, who the fuck starts a conversation like that? I just sat down. <laughs> also, uh, speaking of bros, I will mention Speedwagon is the first of what's known as a Joe bro. A I know there's a lot of them. Yeah, there's a non JoJo character who's basically part of the main cast. Uh, sometimes the Joe bros are even better than the JoJos. And that's episodes one through three. Zen and Phil, what did you think of these episodes? Well, hello, everybody. You thought it would be Rosen for this segment, but it is I, Zenith Warrior Ghost Princess, here with Phil. How's it going, Phil? It's going pretty good. Uh, I, I doubt that they expected anything uh, anything less than us because I'm sure Rosen probably went like... Uh, Hey all, it's uh, it's Philip and and Zen, and uh, this is their channel. It's the people who you're uh, who you're actually here to see. Uh, actually, that's not true. No, people you're here, here for you, Rosen. Zen, but... You're here for Rosen. Everyone knows Rosen. <laughs> I mean, come on. No, I, was, I mean, I was gonna say like you know, people aren't here to see me anyway. They're just here to see you. <laughs> well, they can't see me. They they they're, they're I mean, they they hear me, but like I mean. Oh my God, you're jo you're John Cena. I, no, I'm a ghost. I'm a ghost bunny. But anyway, um, I, I just want to say, is that a JoJo's reference, Phil? Because we're talking about JoJo today. <laughs> it's 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 gonna be a long, however many fucking episodes of JoJo is. Like, I swear, to fucking god, if I have to hear, is that a JoJo's reference every single fucking episode? You can't see it, but I'm striking gouge. a JoJo pose right now. <laughs> I am going to gouge my fucking eyes out, Rosen. Why did you put me with this fucking idiot? I love you. I'm equal. I'm, I'm, I'm equally an idiot, so I can't. <laughs> I can't say shit. I'm just going to jump out of a car with like the the most like crazy jump. Uh, 
Like, uh, anyway, guys, we're talking about the first three episodes <laughs> of Phantom Blood today. You probably already heard, you know, Rosa talk about it, but I wanted to give my thoughts as well. It's been a while. Um, I actually watched the first three episodes of Phantom Blood um, way back with Cat. I want to say like 10, 15 years ago. Cat, after three episodes, didn't like it. It didn't pass her three episode rule. Um, and we'll talk about that in a bit. So, like, I, I ended up watching the remaining, like, Phantom Blood parts, but I didn't watch the rest of it. I did read the manga for parts one and two, though, so I kind of know what's going on. But, like, this was a refresher course. Uh, what I did for this, I actually watched these three episodes and the next three episodes with Lotus Prince. Um, and, uh, we had fun doing that. It just, this, this is, uh, an interesting show for me um in many respects but before we get into my thoughts uh phil what about you what's your history so my history with jojo is uh it's a bit of a weird one uh or you could say a a bizarre, bizarre one, one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no it's actually not that it's it's actually not that crazy in fact it is a a very similar story to what a lot of people uh would probably say if they're like tr trying to get into jojo um, essentially a couple of years ago, uh, I was thinking of getting through the franchise because I have a ton of friends, uh, in person who are, like, really big JoJo fans. So I was like, cool, let me get into the series. But I was warned, like, oh, you gotta kind of bear through part one, uh, because part one's not that good. And I'm like, eh, I'm sure it's not all that bad, especially if it does still have its fans. So I watched part one, and I wasn't all too into it. Uh, and so... Despite the fact that I knew it would get better later on, I'm just kind of like, I don't know, like, even if the characters are better, and even if this is better, yada yada, like, it had the same kind of general pacing as part one, I kind of just, I don't know, like, I'll get back to it, because I don't really like things that are kind of, like, wonkily paced, like, pacing's a big thing for me, because if something has, like, really awkward pacing, then it, like, just takes me out of it, that's something I've come to learn in, like, the past couple of years, as far as, like, how I, like, take in media. Which is um, why you edit my things so that I'm not talking, like, for for 50 minutes about the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, because, like, that, that that's how I came to edit for Zen. Because years ago, I I, I was a, I became a fan of hers. And I'm like, this 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 Zenith person's pretty good. But they, like, you know, I don't know why they, they, have, they have to talk like this in every single one of their videos and pad the runtime out. And so I'm just like, Zed, give the videos to me. Let me edit this fucking shit. But anyway, um, so... You're fired. You're fired. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, get ready for slow videos again, guys. But no. Um, <laughs> okay, so a couple of years back, I tried JoJo. I didn't really... I wasn't really too into part one. Didn't hate it, but I, th I thought it was fine. But, like, a uh, few years after that, like, maybe, like, a year or two later, I'm like, okay, let's give JoJo another shot. But I didn't just want to jump back into part two because I legitimately did not remember, like, most of the crap that happened in the middle of part one. I remember the beginning. I remember the end. Kind of a big spoiler for how this uh, discussion on Phantom Blood's going to be. But, like... Uh, so I, I, I just forgot everything in the middle. So I experienced Phantom Blood again, and I came to have a newfound appreciation for it, even though I still have a lot of problems with it. So, to kind of just lay out what my experience with Phantom Blood was, and I'm going to be curious to see if it still sticks like this, because while I have since seen part, like, uh, episodes 1 to 3 again, I have not watched, uh, the mid portion of Phantom Blood, uh, like, again, like, uh, like, since the last time I watched it, so, I'll say this, from my past experience, I really, really love the first three episodes of Phantom Blood, and I love the final episode of Phantom Blood, maybe the final two, because the, the final, like, the, the penultimate battle against Dio is, like, uh, it, 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 it's, it, it's actually pretty, like, pretty enjoyable, but, like, uh, you know, I, Everything in the middle, I just I just don't find engaging, and I don't find interesting. And I'll be curious to see next time if that sticks. But, uh, yeah, that's kind of my experience with, like, with JoJo in general. I still haven't seen part two, Parts 2 and Beyond. I know a lot about them as far as, like, spoilers are concerned. But I haven't actually got, gotten to experience Parts 2 and Beyond. 
uh, past that. So, uh, yeah. Also, uh, we have no idea how long these segments for us are going to go, like, per episode. So, I hope they don't go too long, because I know Rosen and the gang tend to go off as well. So, like, hopefully this doesn't end up being, like, a four-hour podcast or anything. Welcome to the, the Zenith cast, where we just talk about JoJo, JoJo, JoJo. Um, what The interesting thing for me is that when I first started with JoJo, I, I, it wasn't the anime, it was, you know, I was actually reading, and I read through part one, and I'm gonna say right now, I feel like the way the anime condenses part one ruins some of it, because in the manga, a lot of it is spread out, and I feel like having it be just nine episodes is a little bit reductive. I think the first three episodes are still really good, but I think that's part of the problem is, like, you know, you're... Con- you're taking a lot of these epic confrontations and turning them into like, oh, this is this is one episode and whatnot. But we'll talk about that when we get to the middle. Um, the thing that I liked about the first three episodes in the anime and the manga is how different it was. Because I was not expecting this. I had heard of JoJo. You know, I've heard people talking about the stand users and whatnot. I hadn't heard about the vampires. So, like, you know, when it starts off, it's just like, Oh, hey, here's George Joestar, who's saved, well, in quotations, by this bum named Dario Brando. And, you know, you have all this stuff going on, and it's about his son, Joseph. uh, No, not Joseph. It's Jonathan Joestar. Sorry, I always get the names confused. Jumping uh, jumping a pot ahead. (laughs) Yeah, uh, so, so Jonathan Joestar is his son, and Jonathan just... His whole characterization is that he is this crazy gentleman and he wants to protect people and he wants to be good. And then uh, because of the debt that the Josars have to the Brando family, Dario's son Dio goes to live with the Stars. But out of spite for his alcoholic father, um, who he ends up poisoning to death, uh, he wants to, you know, basically take over jojo's fortune and prove that he is worth something um but also because he's a little shit um and and this part is really weird because like there isn't a lot of bizarre stuff in it and i kind of like that it's a nice slow build up and burn where uh you see the mask when it gets hit with blood um kind of like it grows spines out but nothing else really happens a lot of it is a conflict between dio giving jojo a lot of shit I mean, he, he isolates him from his friends, he he does, uh, he kicks his dog, and then he burns his dog. Man, this guy has a thing against dogs. Um, there, this series <laughs> has a thing against dogs. I know that much. I know, like, one of the things I know about JoJo going forward is that it has a thing against dogs. So, like, we'll get into that as we go on. And I like that it just kind of builds up like this, where it starts off... It's just a conflict between Dio and Jonathan. And you're just like, okay, okay, I like this a lot. And I read manga back in the day. I used to go on, like, scandalation sites and go from, like, top to bottom and just find something that intrigues me. That's how I started reading 20th Century Boys. Um, So it's just like, you know, back in the day, that was what we did to read it, and it was fun. But I think that, you know, the fact that, like, it has this slow build really makes an impact when... He actually puts on the mask, rejects his humanity, and becomes a vampire and, like, starts walking up walls. Like, I think there's this really nice juxtaposition in this first part, especially in these episodes, where the first two, you're just like, it it, it blazes through some of this conflict, but you're waiting for something to happen, and then all of a sudden, vampires. And I'm like, okay, I think that's one of Hiko Araki's big strengths is that you don't see that coming. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I really enjoy these first three episodes because of, like, the, the kind of slow build they have initially, where it's like the first episode is all, you know, focused on, you know, uh, on Jonathan and Dio's childhood. And then, like, you just get to see, like, the world being absolutely, like, merciless to Jonathan for no good reason. Um... And like you, you see, you see him like a, a, as you know he he kind of grows up in his childhood, and I like getting to see like just the, like him get to the point where like he's just 
had enough and just like you know grow, grow to like stand up for himself and like go against Dio and like you know just and it just it's just that adds that little seed of you know of when they when they finally you know become adults of like you know what's to come in their adult life i just if i have to say one problem i will say that like i do wish we got to see kind of a little bit of the in-between or not even the in-between but kind of just how they grew like how jonathan and dio grew to like be friends and be like all chummy brothers and stuff like that and i know it's fake i know that's the point like it's not like it's not a real bond that they shared it is absolutely fake like dio shows no actual love towards jonathan and jonathan deep inside knows this so it's like it's absolutely fake but i think that jumping from the point where they had that fight in their childhood and then you jump like you know however many years in the future it was and it's like oh they're all the best of chums now like i know it's supposed to ha hold that like you know oh it's you know it it's not like like they're not actually all chummy with each other but i think my problem with it is that as we go on it's like there's this uh like there is like a bond there between jonathan and dio as we like as we go on like even if dio has absolutely no like feelings like you know for jonathan in that regard whatsoever but like jonathan is like you know like uh, not to jump into like spoilers i don't know how much rosen like wants us talking about future events so i'm gonna keep it to a minimum just to keep that for like you know future episodes i'm gonna assume that you the viewer are watching this alongside us but there's moments later in phantom blood where it's like uh where jonathan pulls back on certain actions because he doesn't want to harm his brother like his support like his foster brother any more than he needs to and it's like i feel like those moments would hit harder if we saw more of jonathan himself having like grown up you know like to to you know even despite their differences to like grow to like form that bond however fake it may be with dio because even though dio might be faking like you know being like that kind of brother to jonathan at least jonathan himself can treasure that bond because it's what his father wanted and for the record and don't get me wrong i will be getting into some good things like some more good things in a bit but it's like for the record george joestar is a fucking terrible dad he's the <laughs> I, worst I, I, in, in a sense, i do not like him i don't like him in like he's he says later that he was hard on jonathan because he he felt that you know he believed in him and he wanted them to succeed but like he didn't tell them that till later and even then he's just like oh did i drive you to do this he knew all along that dio was plotting his murder and yet he still took the poison medicine and i'm just like you're an idiot george is an idiot uh george is probably the worst joe star um jonathan oh, definitely yeah jonathan i like but the thing that really gets me i like how he is this gentleman and he's defined by his gentlemanliness but there are times where it's a little bit stupid uh and like he just oh well you can cut off my you can cut off my fingers but i will knee you in the groin so bad like a kid on the street would still cut his fingers off like that they're not equivalent exchange um so like <laughs> i i like jonathan's morality but i feel like he goes too far with it but then again i love speedwagon because speedwagon has that awesome hat um and as oh, yeah. and i'm sure rosen already brought this up but yeah ronnie james dio is the villain speedwagon uh you know is is Speedwagon's another character, Ro Robert E.O. Speedwagon, and then uh, Jojo, like, is a song by the Beatles. So, like, you know, you have that. It's a very big, very big uh, song-oriented show, so we're gonna have to get used to yeah, that. I yeah i'm not really like yeah i i don't think we'll be uh we'll be needing to get much into like the trivia as far as like the like the the puns of everyone's names are concerned or even who like all the voice actors are you know i, I will mention any voice actor who like i who particularly stands out to me but it's like i already know rosen's got us all covered as far as like the trivia is concerned yeah Ro like, rosen's you know, got that he... pretty much covered i just find it funny to bring up because like there's a lot of stuff and like it'll come up like jimmy page and robert plant are gonna come up later and i'm just you know it's just a thing. Um, and I, I think uh, the apothecary is Wang Chung or something like that. Um, 
because basically like you know that that was based on a song so like there's a whole big thing there um but my thing is i like these characters i don't think it's as good as compelling as it could be because george and jonathan are just kind of stupid in many respects but i feel like the fact that jonathan is just so noble to a fault and wins over speedwagon that way is really cool and i like how like speedwagon becomes kind of the right hand man the hype man is just he's just like oh my client my client brock lesnar <laughs> you know i just love i just love the <laughs> i just <laughs> love the 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 180 the 180 turn that like uh that speedwagon like uh makes and from what i'm aware of it, this is it's a it's a it's a 180 turn that a lot of allies in the future will also make or it's like and i could be wrong about that maybe i've heard wrong but it's like it's just a 180 turn where it's like he's fighting like he's mugging jo like he's mugging jojo in in, in the in, in a like a back alley this one night but jojo like shows off like like what he can do and he's like no 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 i'm not gonna let any of you fucking harm this guy like th this guy's my you, bro you could, now and you, you just... could have killed my my buddies but you didn't and you went easy on me you're cool you're cool i don't like yeah, i can't like... stand them blue bloods usually but you're cool <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, ju I just love how and and from that po point onward, Speedwagon became like the the best wingman going forward, and we'll get into it. But it's like Speedwagon's one of the only things that I think remains consistently amazing throughout the entire the entirety mm. of Part One. Speedwagon's awesome. I really love the guy. S Speedwagon's um, awesome, but... and I think Dio's awesome too. Like, part of the reason why I kept watching, even though I thought Don Jonathan was a little bit meh, um, even in the manga, I was just like, you know. He's not my favorite Joe Star, but I want to. I like his noble points. But then we see Dio, and Dio's just like awful, and I just love seeing him. And I think what really gets me is that like he hates his father because he's a drunk, but he you later see him stumbling because he's drinking, and he blames his father. He 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 does things to spite his father, but it's like it, it feels like he has these things in his nature, and he blames his father. He poisoned his father to. But, but he, his father said in the will, like, oh, I want you to go to the Joe Stars and get their fortune. It's like, ugh, fuck you, father. I'm not going to do what you tell me, but I'm going to do this to spite you. And he does exactly what his father wants him to do. I love how much of a pet I love how much of a petty bitch Dio is. It's like everyone talks about, like, how, how much of, like, a great, you know, like, big, like, villain, like, like sp spectacle villain Dio is. And he is. But I also just love how much of a petty douchebag he is. It's like, it's it's so good because it's like, he, he's the perfect personification of just like how, because, like, and here's the thing. Like we see bad parenting from both ends of the spectrum. We see George Joestar being like, you know, a bad parent. And we see, you know, Dio's, uh, I forget what Dio's father Dario. Is, Dario Brando. Dario. Yeah, Dario Brando. So it's like, we see him being a bad parent. I think... The juxtaposition was supposed to see, like, you know, how even though George was hard on Jonathan, he did everything, like, you know, to to raise him into, like, a good son. Or as Dario just did, like, he only cared about, like, himself and, like, passing on, like, you know, like, oh, you know, steal the the Joe Star's, like, fortune, like, you know, for the Dario, like, name. He didn't actually give a sh like, too much of a shit about Dio himself. So I... I I assume that there's supposed to be a juxtaposition, a juxtaposition there for in that regard. It's just unfortunately I don't think George is all that good of a character, so I don't think it quite works as well as Araki probably wanted it to. But I do like how, it, as far as like Dio's character in isolation, you know, works on his own. I do like how we see just how much of a horrible, like unredeemable person can be created just from like negligence and like a and just a poor upbringing like that and like there is no redeeming dio because like you know, someone, like, and, and, like, <laughs> yeah and it's like i, I don't want to like just blame dario here because it's like it's 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 because people do this in real life as well well it's where it's like people will excuse you know literal psychopaths because it's like oh well they had a bad upbringing and yada yada and it's like he it's had no every excuse. chance. He had every chance. It's like Do Flamingo, As... where he had every chance to turn over a new leaf, and he chose not to. Yeah, but it's it's like I I love seeing the context of how that ba bad parenthood. 
can lead to someone just incredibly petty like that. And, and also, on the petty aspect itself, it's like, Dio will talk about, like, how he's just above everyone else, but, like, no, he fucking isn't. Like, he, we constantly see him throughout part one stoop to the level of, like, those that he, he like, says that he's, uh, like, that... That he, says he uses him, dirty fighting so tactics, he kills a dog, he steals the kiss of JoJo's girlfriend, he does all the things that he says he's above, and then there's a part like, oh, he, he says, oh, my father's a horrible drunk, and you see him stumbling drinking wine, and he blames his father, and I'm like, no, you're, you're drunk too. Uh, and, and so, like, I, I like that juxtaposition, I like that it shows that it's not just his father. Um, I also do love, like, his luck is a big thing because they, they say that the devil's luck is upon him and there's a portion where like he he spends a lot of the time like getting lucky shots at Jonathan and some of it is his own manipulations but a lot of it is is luck and the biggest thing is when he is researching the mask he he, he basically sees Jojo's research okay and he does this to some thugs while he's drunk and he's just like, oh, well, it, that that was just a kill. That was un, unprecedented. I'm like, dude, what are we expecting? This this guy's dead, and he comes back as a vampire, and he gets so lucky because the sun just suddenly comes up at just the right moment when he was about to die. <laughs> could you could you imagine if he had done that a little bit like earlier, and just like the rest of the franchise ceases to be? It's it's such a like, I get, like, yeah, he lucks into shit like that as well, and it's, like, it's so good, and I love it. It's, like, I know it's a weird praise to be, like, oh, this video, like, like this, um, this villain, like, is kind of sucky, but it's, like, it, I love, I love villains like that, where it's, like, they, they, like, they are completely unredeemable scumbags who will use every trick in the book, and I think, and wrapping back around to, like, why I really love these first three episodes of, like, of Phantom Blood, even though... They still have like some problems, like all the Phantom Blood does, in all honesty. But it's like why I really love these first three episodes in particular is like is because I think that with a story that takes place in the late 1800s, I think it has the perfect like tone of this feeling kind of like a not a fairy tale, but like a like an ancient like story that like you know like that is passed through like a for legend upon a myth and and it could be embellished we don't know like like that's what i kind of like about it is like hey you know it's jack the ripper is suddenly here and it's like it's it's he's here by the way and then he goes for a second so like but like we have these like weird lucky connections that are all over the place and it works because the original dracula was a lot like this too yeah, but it's like it's also like it's it's not just like in the in the sense of like using Jack the Ripper or like these vampires or stuff like that. It's not even just in that aspect. It's like having this like you know what we because like nowadays like you know like oh all these like all these villains they need to have like some complicated backstory or they need to have like you know these big nah you know, he's just a shit moments. he's just or, a shit or it's or or it's like oh this villain has a point but it's like no Dio is just an unredeemable horrible person which is perfect for a story that is like you know this like legend that's passed down so it's like it's it's supposed to be like the personification the personification of true like villainy versus the personification of like true a true heroism. gentleman and I re yeah 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 and i really and i really love that and yes like jonathan has his stupid moments he's not like an amazing protagonist kind of vanilla i'm exp i'm honestly expecting every single uh, he gets Jojo better as be he goes on. I just feel like when he's a kid is when he's at his worst. Because like he's like, I didn't save you, uh, Arena, because I liked you. I saved you because a gentleman. Blah blah blah. I didn't want your thanks. Blah 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 blah. And I'm like, and then they. Oh later, yeah. yeah. I just I thought that was a little bit much. But I I like it. It's showing Jonathan is, you know, as he grows up, he grows into the noble gentleman that George wanted. And it's like, it's the good nobility versus evil. And they showcase the different, the differences in like wealth and caste society, but that isn't a factor in why Dio is evil. And I like that. I like that it's like, it's a theme of wealth disparity turned kind of on its head a little bit. Um, So it's like, it's, it's this really nice, awesome tale. And then all of a sudden vampires show up and, and, like, Dio gets an idea, so, like, he, 
he he finds that you know oh jojo found the guy who is supplying the poison that i was using to poison george joestar the same way i poisoned my own father so he's just like you know what after a bunch of dramatic reveal curtains because they have a lot of those <laughs> a lot of dramatic mm -hmm. reveal curtains you know what i reject my humanity he puts a mask on becomes a super vampire and it just goes awesome because like there's so many good shots uh, that the opening like showcases from the manga like him being shot at and falling as he says he reject my humanity him as a vampire walking up the walls with flames in the background it's just really well done and I think this episode in particular is one of my favorites because it's just non-stop vampire action because like how the yeah. hell do you win against this guy episode three is like Along with the final episode, it's probably my favorite episode of all part one. It's like, I honestly think, like, that final battle, uh, or I say final, like, that battle against, like, against Theo is, like, such a cool set piece because it's, like, it's not just fighting. Because at this point, Jonathan doesn't know what Homon is, and, like, and Homon's a boring power, and it honestly makes the rest of the fights in part one kind of, kind of forgettable for me. But it's, like, like, just seeing Jonathan fight Dio, like, with, like, basically handicapped, because it's, like, Dio now has, like, these fantastical vampire powers, and, like, he set the entire, like, house on fire, which Jonathan now has to, like, claw his way out of, while, like, while Dio's just, like, walking up on the wall. It's, like, it's fantastic. It's a fantastic setup for a fight. It's probably my favorite fight in the entire and game. It, part and one, it's, so like, the entire totally way honest. you're just, like, how is he going to win this? Because he tries to impale Dio with a spear. It goes through his hand. It does nothing. And Dio puts the spear right in his shoulder. So, like, he bends metal. Like, he, he it's basically everything he can do just to fight back and, and put him back into the fire. And he uses his own body to... to to get Dio back into the flames. It's like, I think jo Jonathan's greatest strength as a Jojo is that the more punishment he takes, he comes back stronger. He's he's like Vegeta. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's like, you know, I, I, I think it's just a, a, a good natural escalation because the first episode, we like, you know, it's it's just a slow, you know, it, it is a slow burn. It, like, that's the thing. And I know a lot of people who like get into when it, it's like, so when do the bizarre elements kick in? And it's like, you know, and luckily they they, they they got a meme in the first episode with like, it was ideal to like, kind of be like, oh, hey, he said the thing I see online. But it's like, otherwise it is quite a slow burn. I don't mind that slow burn. Cause again, I like seeing Jonathan having to like traverse through basically everyone fucking turning on him because Dio is a shit. And he like makes like, he makes Jonathan seem like a puss because he kind of is. But it's like, I like that pu push to see, like, Jonathan need to be, like, like need to basically stand up for himself instead of just sitting around and, like, and... I don't want to say whining about it, because he has legitimate reason to be angry. But it's, like, a lot of, like, how he, like, goes about it is just to basically, like, sit around and, like, complain about the entire thing. Which is, like, which is why I, like, I like how he, like, like stands to, like, basically go, like, no. And, like, he, he goes and, like... And deals with it and then george is like oh well you shouldn't be fighting dio and it's like shut up george but it's like no one likes that, that's you george why, <laughs> no one likes that's kind of why i want that's kind of why i wanted to see more of that bridge like kind of to see jonathan like like making an attempt to patch up with dio and th then dio could be like you know what i can make something of this and so they like they and they they kind of form that bond like that fake bond together so it's like just so it isn't like you shouldn't like you know because you know, obviously, I see where George is coming from, where it's like, oh, you shouldn't be fighting each other because you're brothers, and like, you know, it, like, you know, it isn't right. So it's like, I see where he's coming from on that aspect, but also it's like, with how like negligent George is of like, of you know, how much shit his son's going through, it just makes jo like George come off as just as much of a jackass as like as Dio does. So like, seeing that bridge would have been nice, but. With that said, even though we don't get to see that bridge into their adulthood, I think those next two episodes kind of fare a little better because we're kind of past that point of idiocy from George and Jonathan, and we get to see, like, you know, we get to see Jonathan in his more mature state where he's like, you know, he'll still beat the crap out of you if you're, like, if you're dissing, you know, I, like, you know, his friends and stuff, but it's like he'll try 
to go about things in the reasonable way. He'll try to go about things in an honorable way. But, like, you know, he's, like... It's kind of a half and half where he'll learn, like, you know, to stand up for himself and, like, you know, and lay on a, lay on a beat down if he needs to. But also going about things in, like, you know, a more dignified way if he can, if it's a possible solution. Problem is, this is JoJo, so it's never going to be a possible solution. Like, let's be honest <laughs> here. But, yeah. I, yeah. I, I really like these first, these first three episodes. They're not perfect, you know, like, they're not like super amazing but i like them because i think of, of the entire part i i think in conjunction with the final episode i think they personify this like legendary feel the most where i feel like we kind of get more of like the shonen-y aspects in the middle and that stuff i don't really think works all too well but for these first three episodes i think dio works really amazingly and i think he continues to work amazingly going forward uh i really like uh you know again speed wagon we only see like you know, bits and pieces of him, like, in, like, the second half of these first three episodes, but he's really good, and then Jonathan, although he kind of starts off a little weak in the beginning, I think, like, we get to, like, really see him kind of evolve into, like, this, you know, like, I get still vanilla, but, like, much more enjoyable character by the time episode three ends, so that's kind of my overall thoughts on my end. What about you, Zen? Yeah, like, I, I pretty much agree. I think it gets off to a rocky start with episode one, but the thing is, because I read with the manga and it was more... It, it wasn't as rushed, I kind of liked that tone for it. I liked that build-up. And, yeah, it has, like, a really weird thing where, like, you time skip, and I would have liked to see more there. But episodes two and three in that part of the manga are some of my favorite bits. I think just it goes to show, like, this good escalation. Um, and then Dio survives in the end credits because he has the devil's own luck, and uh, he, mm -hmm. he he turns people into to, to ghouls and and whatnot. And he, he you know so we're gonna deal with that later. But like this epic final battle, the final in quotations with with Dio is is one of my favorite parts. You know, it's there's a reason why like the amazing opening uses that those manga panels because they're iconic. The bullets, the walking up the wall. Because these are some of the best parts of it. I do feel like uh, Hirohiko took a while to really hit his stride. But I think what he was trying to do was definitely different. I, It was a different age. This was created back in the 80s. So, like, you know, mm -hmm. I, I, I imagine people were, like, liking different things. And people said back in the day, I believe this was kind of a ripoff of uh, Fist of the North Star at one point in the character designs on um, from what people have told me now i don't know like don't quote me on that like that's what i believe uh has been stated but even still like i think it kind of delves its own path because yeah jonathan is kind of like uh you know the ken you know he's this noble badass but i think I think it's a little bit different in how it goes about setting things up, and I think the conflict with Dio is what really brings it out of its shell. I could have done without George, got, gotta be honest, um, <laughs> but like the stuff with Dio was really palpable. I loved it, and it's, I. It's not. It's not that like George should have like. It's not that George shouldn't have even been there. It's just that like tighten up his character again. See more of the in between, and I won't give it too much shit because it's it's a it's a it's a shonen from the eighties. But also, it's like to see more of the in between there to kind of see like what his thought process is. Because I also understand that you're, he's not supposed to be one hundred percent likable. He's supposed to see like, oh crap, I have gone too far. But it's like I don't think that there's enough instances of seeing the good qualities of what he's supposed to be passing on to Jonathan, like compared to you know, like, all, like, the crap he gives him for, like, for basically just being a negligent dad. I just wanted more of a balance, basically. Yeah. Is, is um, the thing. yeah. But we had, we had Speedwagon and Dio and showing, like, the different, and, like, Jonathan all showing the difference in cast. Um, I liked Arena for as little as she did in that part, but, like, you know, like, this is just an interesting story that goes from drama between two brothers to vampires and it, it, it just automatically becomes awesome next time we're getting to the bizarre portion nothing really bizarre has happened aside from the vampires um but you know jack the ripper returns next time even though he was only like 
at the end of part one, like the episode one. It's it's a weird. It's like, by the way, Jack the Ripper is here. No, he isn't. <laughs> but um, we'll get to that. So a bit 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 of a bit, a bit of a weird behind the scenes thing because I I didn't think to ask. Uh, are we inserting this into the podcast or is this at like the end or something? I have no idea when this is going to be, but for now, I'm just going to say thank you guys for listening to our thoughts. Um, thank you for watching, and uh, just remember, it gets better after this. Mm-hmm. So either either back to Rosen, or, um, or we'll see you guys next time, depending on, like... Well, I guess we'll see you guys next time either way, but it's, like, just depending on, you know, how, uh, how this is being structured. We'll see you next time. Bye, everyone. And uh, just remember, don't go near stone masks. They can turn you into vampires. Let's go to our next segment, the Bizarro Meter. How bizarre was this on a scale from 1 to 9? Yeah, I'm assuming you're referring to this as, like, if you, how much did you like it? No, I'm actually asking how much how bizarre it was to you. Oh, um... I'll go first. I'm going to give this a 2 out of 9. Because, uh, th- compared to, like, just what I know, this shit's tame. Yeah, if, I if, feel it, like... if this is the, the not bizarre shit, I can't wait to see what we're gonna... Yeah. Uh, what we're gonna uncover. Uh, honestly, I'll give it a three compared to what I've seen with other shows because, I mean, this will be a spoiler, not spoiler for you there, Rosen, uh, for whenever you get to this on Randomate, but Black Butler did this kind of shit a lot. So this is just Black Butler level. Fair. I think I'm honestly gonna stay in the boat of like a two. Doesn't seem very, it was, seems very tame. Like, I sure I was like, I didn't say what the fuck a couple times, but like it's for the start. Yeah. It's we haven't pretty, really pretty tame. Yet. Hmm. I'll give it like a like a four. Fair. Um, like it's pretty wacky. Um, I it, think I think the wackiness comes a lot more from its presentation more than anything right now. Yes. Um, I think that's definitely like I I, I and like yeah like. Joey I, I, Jojo's I know, I know wacky that it gets trip. A lot higher concept later. So right now it's 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 tame relative. To <laughs> yeah. That. But also, I've been watching a lot of like very grounded shows recently. So yeah, like it's 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 a okay, good middle ground. Shows, like, it's a good middle ground of it will get weirder, but also this is weird from compared to normal stuff. Yeah. Yeah. If I'm if I'm doing it compared to some of the some like compared to other weird stuff I've seen, this is probably about a three. Like it ha- it has some wacky kind of what the fuck moments but nothing too crazy uh general though like if you were just to show this to uh a normal person they'd probably already say it's like a seven or an eight yeah like, it's already <laughs> so off the wall for uh the average viewer the, my entire role in this particular <laughs> segment is being spider ham it can get weirder uh, <laughs> uh and that'll do it for this week's episode next week we are covering we're probably covering episodes four five six and seven Oh god. Maybe. That's a lot of episodes. I was like, we could we, we could do four, five, and six. We'll see how it goes. We'll we'll come back with episodes. Yeah. Point is at the very least we will cover episodes four, five, and six, possibly seven. The episodes are Overdrive, The Dark Knights, Courage of Tomorrow, and The Successor. I hope Man. Courage of Tomorrow includes Courage of the Cowardly Dog. <laughs> with like a bicentennial man body. <laughs> oh, yeah, just the, the courage like, of the future. The things I do for love. And then courage dies. No. I had a bad feeling about this. Or my name is Iggy, and it's not. Dead dog can't freak. And I think that's uh, that's it. Yay! Yippee! Thank I don't know how to end this. <laughs> yeah, I think. Cola. Yippee! I think we'll probably just do four, five, and six next time. Right, that works. Okay. Yeah, I, I was uh, yeah, and then. If we do seven, eight, nine next time, we'll be finished with part one by by the third episode recording. Oh Jesus! Yes, you are a Yeah. All right. Uh, then I'm gonna do the raid, so I'll see y'all later. All right. All right. Have a good one. All right. Bye. See ya.